Hey guys. This is part 5 of what if Naruto was Luffy's sister. Hit like and subscribe if you like this one and also please check the author in the description. Let's start. We are pain, that's all. We are God. Chapter 17. Straw Hat's Return. Time sure goes fast. Amidst the coldness of the snowy weather, a hand reached out for a straw hat that had been buried under that many layer of snow for God knew how long. I can't believe that it has already been two years. He muttered to himself as he brushed off the snow from his beloved hat. Unspeakable emotions flashed across his eyes as he stared at the straw hat. He hadn't wear the straw hat for two years. The boat is ready to go, informed Margaret as soon as she arrived with more people following closely behind her. The sudden appearance of the unknown people triggered the beasts that stood quietly behind him. Thinking that these people were intruders, they let out a ferocious growl, only for them to be silenced with a disapproving gaze coming from him. Look closely, those are my friends, he said sternly, causing them to lower their heads pitifully at him. Seeing him subdue those beasts easily, Sandersonia commented so you actually went ahead and became the boss of the entire island. Yeah, but because I made the mistake of becoming friends with these guys, I can't eat them. I bet they will taste so good. He sighed, causing his former foods turned friends looking horrified at the young man. It's all right, Luffy. I've already loaded up all of your favorite food into the boat. Hancock beamed at him shyly. Such a thoughtful woman like me will make a great wife you know, she added with a bashful look. I'm not gonna marry you, but thank you for the food. Rejecting, but also didn't forget about manners, Luffy thanked her sincerely for the food. Instead of getting upset with his rejection, his words only caused her heart to beat even faster as blood rushed to her face. I love it even when you're like that with me. She squealed with pure delight and admiration in her eyes. Elder Nyan could only shook her head helplessly at the pirate empress's delusional behavior. The sight had become so familiar to the old woman that she didn't even want to care anymore. Since Rayleigh had left six months ago, I'm sure he'll be waiting for you there. Luffy let out a small grin. Yeah. He already taught me all of the basic in a year and a half. I'm so grateful for that. Now it's finally time to say farewell to this island and you guys. Looking around the place that had been his temporary home for the past two years, he took a deep breath and finally said all right. Let's go. Luffy and Hancock, along with the rest of the Kuja pirates and Elder Nyan boarded the ship. They soon sailed away from Rizakena Island until they reached a spot not far from Sabedi Archipelago. You should wear this. Putting the fake mustache that came together with a fake nose, Hancock was very determined to teach Luffy on how to disguise himself. I don't need that. Don't worry, no one will find out. Luffy refused, but he also didn't push her away when the taller woman fussed over him, making sure that his face would stay hidden underneath the cloak. Still, you should at least hide your face. You may have an appear for two years, but people can still recognize your face. If you cause a disturbance, it may delay your journey. Knowing that she did this out of kindness and just worried about him, Luffy just went along with her. Plus, he kinda liked this fake mustache thingy. Usopp and Chopper would surely laugh once they saw him. Then Hancock started to ramble like a fussy wife of what she had prepared for him. There were so many things that she said but only one thing that caught his attention. Packed lunches. At least he wouldn't go hungry while finding his way to the his crew. We of the Kuja pirates will always be ready to come for your aid should you ever need us. Please do not forget this. Hancock and the Kuja pirates smiled at him. Luffy beamed at them in response. Yeah. Thanks a lot you guys. We'll be praying for your safe journey. Margaret spoke up, followed by the other's words of encouragements and well wishes. Hancock on the other hand was blushing like a teenage girl in love. Also, there is just one thing that I want from you. What is it? I'm not marrying you if that is what you want. Thinking that he was about to be asked to marry her, Luffy quickly rejected her with a straight face. No, not that. Feeling bashful, she closed her eyes and cupped her face as she meekly said I only want you to leave, without saying goodbye. What? Don't worry. 
flashing her his brightest smile, he responded besides, I want to see you again. You as in all of them, but Hancock being Hancock who thought that he meant solely her, started to become delusional again. Elder Nyan who stood quietly beside her could only heave out a tired sigh. As Luffy was ready to leave, Hancock told him once again as to not drawing any attention to himself, which he promised her. He jumped into the small boat given to him by the Kuja pirates and waved at them as the boat slowly started to drift away from their ship. Well then, I'll be off now. See ya. He then turned his head away from them and had his eyes fixed on the small dot at the horizon, which was the Sabaidi archipelago. Luckily for him, because his destination was right in front of him, he managed to reach the island without any problems. Getting off the boat, he felt a surge of emotions the moment his feet touched the ground. The last time he was here was also the last time he saw his crew. Even though he knew that they were fine, he missed them very much. He wondered if the rest had already arrived. Well, knowing them, they would surely be able to get here in the end. He had faith in all them. He also believed that they must have gotten a lot stronger now. Carrying the massive overloaded bag that looked like it could explode any time soon on his shoulders with no effort, he also made sure that he wore his cloak properly. He hadn't put on the fake mustache yet. He should put it on soon. Just as when he lifted one foot off the ground, he felt a presence nearby and a pair of watching eyes on him. Not feeling anything bad from the person in hiding, Luffy only turned his head slightly to a certain direction where his instinct was telling him that the person was definitely there. Gentle breeze suddenly passed by the place, causing the leaves on the trees to sway gently as if they were waving themselves at him. A moment after that, a person suddenly stood before him. Luffy blinked for a couple of times before his eyes widened in surprise. Even with that cloak covering his whole person, Luffy would still be able to recognize him. How could he not when this person once saved him from the smoker guy when he was in Logue Town before? Not to mention that he had also seen a picture and an article of him before. Of course he would recognize his own father. You! Seeing the flash of recognition across his son's eyes, Dragon removed the cloak that covered his face, revealing his face and that tattoo that he was famous for, to his youngest child. Hello, Luffy. Both father and son stared at each other. There was an air of awkwardness around them since either had uttered any sound or word to each other. Dragon stared at the face he had only seen in pictures or articles before. He decided to follow his daughter's advice to come and see him. Hence, here he was. Like Nehru, Dragon also often kept tabs on what his children had been doing. In Nehru's case, he wasn't always able to keep track on her even when she was a child. Later, he completely lost track of her when she left the East Blue twelve years ago. He only met her once again when she appeared at the HQ for Sabo. As for Luffy, from when he was a baby until he entered the Grand Line, Dragon never failed to keep a close eye on him. He at least had to make sure that nothing bad happened to him until he was able to take care of himself. Twelve years ago, when he was back in Goa Kingdom, he purposely avoided a possible encounter with his son who wanted to see him out of curiosity. It pained him when he was only able to look at his children from afar, but Dragon thought that less interaction was the better solution for his children's safety. What he did was all for the sake of keeping his children safe from his enemies. But out of his expectation, his daughter was the unusual one. Not that he didn't expect that. He always knew that his eldest child was different than the rest after all. Too wise and strong for her age, she didn't really need his protection. And since both of his children were all grown up now, not to forget that the whole world had already known about their family relationship, there was no need to avoid seeing his own son now, right? There. Dad? Luffy started. This was the first time he was finally able to face his father, and calling him dad after many years of only hearing his name. Luffy didn't know what to say. But since he was his father, then it was only right for him to refer the man as dad, right? Plus, it wasn't like he never referred the man as his father before. Only, this was the first time he did so in front of the person himself. Dragon cleared his throat. Yes. Showing a rare smile on his face, he said you've grown so much since the last time I saw you. Luffy laughed in response, surprising Dragon. Shishishishi. Yeah, I've gotten a lot stronger now. I see. 
When he saw Luffy in Logetown, he was skinnier and appeared to be less muscular than he was now. At the present, Luffy was taller and more muscular. He had that air of seriousness and maturity that people often overlook due to his childlike nature. What are you doing here, Dad? Luffy asked. The word Dad just rolled off his tongue so easily as thought he had been using that word so often in his life. Although he was surprised, Dragon was also greatly pleased. Yahem. I came here to see you. He replied before he quickly changed the subject. My team is here to send off your friend, Robin. We just arrived, actually. Oh? Robin is already here? That's good to hear. He was happy to hear about his crew. Since Robin was already here, it was possible that all of his crew were already here. Now he really couldn't wait to see them soon. Seeing the excited look on his son's face, he continued. All of your friends are here. You're the last one to arrive, actually. If you meet up with them now, you will be able to set sail without any problem. But you need to be aware that many marines are on standby in order to capture you and your crew. Marines? Luffy knitted his eyebrows. They already know about us? That's quick. Don't worry. It wasn't because of you the marines are here. Luffy blinked, confused. Not us? There are a group of people impersonating your crew. They have been using the name Straw Hat Pirates to recruit many people to join their crew. They might cause a problem for you and your friends later, so be careful. Dragon explained. Luffy pondered his father's words seriously. If this fake crew could cause problem for his crew later, then it might even delay their journey. Luffy didn't like that. He also didn't like it when some people using his crew, his friends for their own greedy desires. But he already promised Hancock that he would keep a low profile and stay about trouble. In this situation, what must he do? Just make sure to meet up with your friends as soon as you can. As long as the Marines don't see and recognize you, then it will be fine. The Marines' attention is fixed on the fake one, so it might not be a bad thing for you. They can be the diversion so that your crew can leave without troubles following after you. Thinking about it, Luffy nodded. All he had to do was stay out of trouble, meet his crew, and leave. Easy. You're right. I was told not cause any disturbance. I'll just go find Zoro and the others soon. Then he showed his perfectly de smile to his father. Thanks, Dad. Stunned, Dragon was surprised but also happy when he received the genuine smile from his son. He thought that Luffy wouldn't accept him as a father, at least not as quick as his daughter did let alone being called a dad as soon as they met. It made him happy but also felt guilty at the same time. Wordlessly, he took a couple of steps forward until he stood in front of the young man and placed his hand on top of his head. Wah! Luffy! He interrupted him. I have failed as a father for not being there for the both of you. I won't say anything to justify my actions. But I want you to know that, never once have I ever stopped thinking of you children. Whether it's about your well-being, your favorite things to do, your favorite food, your dreams. I've always thought about it day after day. The love that I have for my children have never faded away, even when I'm the bad one in my children's lives. Slowly, he removed his hand from Luffy's head and rested his hand on top of his shoulder next, gripping it with enough strength to let him know that he, his father, was right here in front of him. It may be selfish of me to say this, but... I hope I can still have the chance to be a father to you. The warmth and gentle affection that Luffy could see in his father's eyes never wavered when he spoke. Not even the small smile on his face. Dragon didn't expect anything. He didn't even know what kind of response would Luffy give him. Like Nera had said, Luffy was unpredictable with his words and actions. The leader of the Revolutionary Army was ready to accept a rejection as he removed his hand from his son's shoulder dejectedly though he didn't show it. But again, he was surprised to see a wide grin suddenly appeared on Luffy's face. Dad, I hope to see you again soon in the new world. It took him a while to process his words, but when he did, he smiled. Simple and direct. He got his answer. For Dragon, it was enough. Suddenly, he laughed boisterously, and Luffy soon followed after him with his own shushishishi. Sure, son. Today, father and son stood together, facing each other with a wide happy smile on their faces for the first time in 19 years. 
both thought that today was indeed a good day for a happy reunion. In a local bar somewhere. As so many things have changed in just two years. A beautiful woman sighed when the bartender put down a glass of beer in front of her. It seems that there are more pirates here than two years ago. You're absolutely right, young lady. The bartender agreed. Why is that so? Eyes brimming with curiosity, the woman thought back about the scary amount of pirates walking around the whole place leisurely. Did you know the Marines moved their headquarters? That piqued her interest. I thought it's right near here at Marine Ford. The bartender shook his head at her. They switched it with their G1 branch, which was right on the other side of the red line. This was the decision made by the new fleet admiral that replaced Sengoku. This way, the HQ is in the same ocean as the Yonko. More especially, the Yuzukage. Her eyes brightened when he mentioned the last person. Thanks to that, the threat of having the HQ next to us has lessened, and the lawless areas on this island have increased. I see. She sipped her beer before she continued. I heard about the Yuzukage, but I don't know much about her. Is there any recent news about her? Oh yeah. That woman is a total tyrant. Why do you say so? You may not notice it yet, but there are no longer any slave market or slave auction house here. He whispered. Even the world nobles rarely come here because of that. Nami narrowed her eyes as memories of what happened two years ago replayed in her head. I haven't noticed. Well, yeah. That's because that monkey Dean Nero had abolished every illegal or legal slave markets and slave auction houses a year ago. It enraged the world nobles but since it was her who had done it, they just let her be. The bartender sighed. I also heard that, unlike the Yankos who minded their own things, she was actually brave enough to rob many kingdoms under the world government. Not only that, those that used to be under the reign of Whitebird's flag now belong to her. This isn't an official news, but she also took back the stolen territories that Blackbird once took away from the Whitebird pirates. What happened to the Whitebird pirates after that? She asked, leaning her body closer to the counter. The bartender gulped when his eyes were drawn to the sight of her chest. W.L. After the payback war, none of the Whitebird pirates come back to the surface again. It's like all of them had disappeared. He added, That ain't true. A man interfered. He and his partner had been listening to the two talking for a while now. You know that ace? He stays in Yuzu now. Nothing surprising there. Isn't he and the Yuzukij our siblings or something? It's natural for him to seek out protection from his sister. His partner spoke up. As the four of them were still absorbed in their conversation, suddenly they heard a commotion on the other side of the bar. Someone just got shot. She looked over her shoulder and saw a man lying on the floor, covered in blood. Fifty-five million bounty? A huge man wearing a red vest and a straw hat spoke with a mocking smile. Go back and read the flyer. I specified at least seventy million. I won't deal with any captain lower than that. I can't believe you had the gall to set foot in here with your mere bounty. The other people around him laughed at the bleeding man. Go home, you piece of shit. I am the son of Dragon the Revolutionary, and the Yuzukij is my older sister. The man boasted. We have no use for people who'll just slow us down. We are the chosen pirates. We're on a whole other level. We can't just let anyone join our crew. The commotion would of course drew in everyone's attention to them. Nami, the bartender and the two men couldn't help but to frown. Especially her. There was a sense of mocking, annoyance and disgust written all over her face when the man claimed to be who he was. She herself couldn't believe her eyes that these people were easily fooled by them. Or is someone as ugly and old as you dared to claim a younger woman as your older sister? She thought to herself. You're probably older than Dragon himself. Oh yeah, how could we forgot about that guy? Sigh, having a monstrous family sure is doing good for him. The bartender said quietly. That straw hat Luffy sure is merciless. What do you expect? They've accomplished a lot. Hearing all of these people murmuring and actually falling for the man's cheap talks made Nami even more annoyed, but she restrained herself from saying anything. Hey, even if you want to pretend to be someone, at least make sure to do a decent job. She thought, silently judging the poor imitation of the whole crew. 
In her opinion, those people were just a cheap and ugly version of the real deal. She focused on finishing her beer when the fake Luffy started to boast about some pirate's captains joining them. She wasn't interested in that. Her mind drifted to her crew faces. A sense of longing, excitement, and anticipation filling up her heart. It's really been two years. And you over there. Realizing that she was being called out by the fake Luffy, Nami rolled her eyes. Don't just sit there moping alone. Come over here. No thanks. She refused, not even looking at him. I'm waiting for someone. Her unexpected refusal caused a ruckus among those in the bar. Even the bartender looked nervous. Not taking her refusal seriously, the fake Luffy laughed out loud. Ah ha 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 waiting for someone? Whoever it is, he's probably a weakling who'll cry and apologize once he hear Captain Luffy's name. Hurry up and get over here. Feeling more annoyed, Nami looked at him and said I'm only going to say this one more time. I have no interest in you, so I'm not going to drink with you. Do you understand, Straw Hat, whoever you are? H. Hey. Stop it. The nervous bartender tried to stop her. It's Straw Hat Luffy. Not caring, she turned her attention away from them, enraging them even more. Then one of them, the woman who Nami assumed tried to impersonate herself, walked over to her and casually put her hand around her shoulder. Nami didn't even listen to whatever the imposter was trying to say, not even when the imposter pointed a gun to her face. Her face remained emotionless, but she was so ready to attack if it was necessary. As everyone focused on what was going on, they all failed to notice someone walked into the bar. The newcomer calmly took out something from his bag and released an attack towards the two women. Special attack, Green Star. Devil. The fake Nami noticed the attack just in time to see something headed towards her. And then poof. Suddenly a weird-looking plant appeared, taking the screaming fake Nami in its mouth before it went to where the fake Luffy and his group were. Help me, Captain. What sort of plant is this? Arg, stay away from me. Not knowing what just happened, Nami looked dumbstruck at the sight of that weird-looking plant attacking those imposters. What is that plant? So, young lady, do you want to drink with me? A familiar voice appeared beside her. She looked over and her confusion instantly turned into joy when she saw who it was. Usopp. Her face immediately broke into a smile, squealing in happiness as she hugged him, bringing his face closer to her boobs. Long time no see. I can't believe it. You became so manly now. Indeed he had become a lot manlier now. From that scrawny teen in her memories to the strong-looking young man in front of her. Oof. Why you've grown some yourself? Usopp mumbled helplessly as his face was still buried in between her boobs. Especially his nose. Is that yours? Nami asked, pointing to that plant that was still busy attacking the fake crew. Yep. That's my new weapon, Pop Green, Usopp proudly said. It's not like I was watching the sea and doing nothing for two years you know. He continued I'm sorry to say but I am no longer belong to the weak trio with you and Chopper. I became a warrior who isn't afraid of anything. Hey brat. Did you do this? One of them interrupted, shocking Usopp when he saw the mask that the guy was wearing. What? So Gekin? How? Grabbing his wrist, Nami dragged him with her to the door. Just ignore him, Usopp. Let's find another bar. I've got a favor to ask. Seeing that they're about to leave, fake Luffy yelled wait. You bastards. Who do you think we are? Huh? Luffy? Oh. Miss, what about your tab? The bartender cried out miserably when he saw them leaving the bar. Outside the bar. Eh, so they're just fake. Nami rolled her eyes at him. Of course they're fake. What are you doing? He blinked when he saw the orange-haired woman took out something from between her breasts, revealing a climb attack. Not answering him, she just tossed it into the air, murmuring something under her breath and dark clouds started to appear above the bar. Suddenly there was a sound of thunder, and he could see some lightnings. Troubles, was what she said when he stared at her in confusion. Hearing sound of footsteps, he understood at once. A moment after that, the whole bar was hit with a bolt of lightning. The two then turned away from the scene, 
as if nothing happened, talking to each other of what they went through for the past two years. Ignoring everything, the duo left behind a mess, living up to the crew's reputation. Meanwhile, HHH? So you're telling me that the idiot swordsman actually was the first one to the ship? Sanji yelled out in disbelief. Even when they confirmed him that it was indeed that the stupid Zoro was the earliest among them, Sanji still find it hard to believe. Listening to the couple telling him about the others' arrival one by one, Sanji felt glad that most of them were already here and the crew would finally get back together. Only Robin and Luffy hadn't arrived yet. I'm impressed that all of you managed to get back here, Rayleigh commented. Yeah, Sanji nodded. I'm also surprised to hear that you trained Luffy. He must be pretty strong by now. I haven't seen him in six months myself, so I'm looking forward to see how much he has grown since then. The old man laughed, only to sweat drop when Sanji didn't even bother to listen to him at all. By the way, Rayleigh-san, Sanji put on a serious facade once he was done thinking about a certain navigator. Thinking that whatever the young man about to say is something serious, Rayleigh put down his newspaper. H.M.? Have you met? Luffy's older sister? Looking at the serious and desperate look on the youngster's face, the old man wondered if they knew each other, but answered nonetheless. Yes, I had the pleasure of meeting her a couple of times before. Really? Is she truly as beautiful as she looked like in here? Eyes turned to heart sign, he suddenly took out a wanted poster out from of nowhere and put it on his chest. There was a trail of blood leaking out from his nose as smoke coming out from his ears. Both Rayleigh and Shaki stared at Sanji with amusement shown through their eyes even though this wasn't the first time they had seen him behave like this before. You mean Nerechan? Suddenly there was a photo between her fingers as she waved it in the air. Looking closely, it seemed to be a picture of a lady. Quicker than a wind, the red-faced Sanji snatched the photo from Shaki with the trembling hands. T this. In that photo was a woman with long black hair tied into a high ponytail. Her eyes are cerulean blue with three thin lines on each of her cheeks, making her resemble a fox or a cat. Despite the marks on her face, it didn't make her less beautiful. She was wearing what looked like a dark blue long robe that reached her mid-thighs was split on either side, revealing a black short underneath. She was also wearing, what he assumed, a black shirt underneath her robe. Absolutely gorgeous. He cried out, hugging the photo closer to his chest as he twirled around happily on his toes like a ballerina. Grove 47 Hey Zoro! Sanji! Robin! We finally see each other but why are you guys acting so weird? Chopper asked. He just arrived yesterday, and so far he hadn't seen any of his friends yet. But he knew that they were somewhere around the island. Rayleigh said so. Today, as he was on his way to where the Sunny was docked since he was told that Frankie was there, he just happened to stumble upon three of his good friends. They looked a little bit different, and didn't quite smell the same, but he didn't think of anything strange with that. After all, time could change people, right? We haven't seen each other for so long. What's wrong? Why are you guys not talking to me at all? Chopper tried again. He had been following them for a while now but for some reasons they refused to talk to him, much to his confusion. Not giving up, he tried once again. Zoro and Sanji have become good friends over the past two years. Seeing the two who used to fight against each other, now behaving so friendly as they stick together, was a strange sight to the reindeer, but he was happy to see them get along nonetheless. Not just them, even Robin for some reasons, had became shorter. Throwing a side glance at the talking raccoon that had been tailing them for so long, Zoro, Sanji, and Robin compared the talking animal with the pet in the wanted poster again. This time, after seeing the 100% similarities between the one in the poster and the one behind them, they believed that this one right here was the real pet of the straw hat pirates. Excited, they thought about how they would be more believable if they had the real deal. They soon made a decision to take him with them after believing that it was a poor creature that had been abandoned by its masters. But what does it even eat? Robin asked. Cotton candy, of course. Then much to Chopper's shock, the gentle Robin that he once knew suddenly kicked the fox away aggressively before taking out a cucumber out of nowhere. 
Even when she was bitten in the head as an act of revenge by the fox until she bleed, she didn't drop the smile on her tightened face, trying to lure him to her. Here, Chopper, I've got a cucumber for you. You're scaring me, Robin. All of a sudden, two men in black appeared, stuffing Robin and the fox in a sack before they took off, leaving a perplexed Chopper by the unexpected turn of event. Oh no! Robin got kidnapped. Somewhere. Hiding behind a building was a gorgeous woman with long black hair, wearing a black sunglasses over her head. Succeeded in losing the man that kept following her, Nico Robin looked down at the two papers in her hands. Brooks Concert. The Straw Hat Pirates. Recruiting new members? What on earth is going on? As she wondered, she heard the conversation between the man and the snail saying something about succeeded in capturing her, along with a fox that had bitten her and refused to let go. Highly confused but also amused, she moved away from her hiding spot. It would be troublesome if she were to be seen again. I wonder if the others are already here? Grove 33, Sabedi Parks Concert Arena, Sabadum. Kaya Brooksama. Brooksama. Soul King Brook. Inside the concert hall, gathered thousands of fans who came for the sole purpose of seeing their beloved singer aka the Soul King Brook. Chants of his name rang throughout the hall. Banners and posters of him could be seen everywhere even on the outside. Some fans were even crying for they could finally see their idol for the first time in their lives. All of these showed exactly how much Brook was loved by his fans. Also, at the backstage was Brooke who sat comfortably as he played his guitar with no hurry. He was humming a melody of a song that he would perform later. Hearing footsteps from behind, Brooke stated manager, I will make this live show as the best performance ever. Yo ho 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 ho. Later. Bang. How could you just fired a shot just like that all of a sudden? What did we do? A man shouted at the culprit who just released a shot of bullet to the trembling woman in his embraces. They were just happily looking around the place when suddenly his wife was shot for no reason. I said sorry, didn't I? It was just an accident, my bad. Even though he apologized, but everyone could see that he really didn't feel any remorse for shooting an innocent person. I happened to be looking for two people who looked just like you two. A woman and a man with long hair and long nose. Seeing the rage and hatred in the eyes of the grieving man, fake Luffy's face darkened. Don't tell me you got a problem with this. When the man didn't say anything, fake Luffy sneered and immediately shot him as he said guess you do. Seeing the poor couple bleeding on the ground, the others immediately distanced themselves from the straw hat pirates, not wanting to be the next victim. Feeling gleeful upon seeing people looked at him with fear in their eyes. Fake Luffy loudly ordered his men to search for those two couple that humiliated him before. Suddenly he fell to the ground when he felt something collided with him from behind. Enraged, he turned around only to see a weirdo carrying an oversized backpack walking past him. Wait a minute! Fake Luffy yelled, causing those watching the scene to pray for the poor guy's safety. The poor guy Luffy stopped on his track only to see a man that looked like he was burnt, sitting on the ground. For some reasons, he kinda looked familiar, but Luffy couldn't seem to guess where he had seen the man before. Still, not minding the tone of the man's voice, Luffy said did I bump into you? Sorry then. And he continued on his way without paying any more attention to him. I said stop right there. This time, Luffy was really annoyed now. After having a conversation with his father, he was now on his way to meet up with the rest of his crew, but this stupid guy just had to stop him. He apologized already. He didn't have time to waste anymore. What do these people want from him anyway? Did they perhaps recognize him? Shoot. He should have put on the fake mustache like Hancock told him to. Pulling out his gun again, fake Luffy and his fake crew surrounded Luffy with arrogance in their eyes. Now get on your knees and beg for your life. How dare you mess with me, a pirate with a bounty of 400 million berry? If a moment ago Luffy was annoyed, now he was more than just annoyed. Especially when this guy was being so annoying he was poking his cheek with his gun. Holding back the urge to punch him away, Luffy reminded himself of his promise to Hancock that he would stay out of trouble. But this guy was seriously asking for a beating from him. Wait, 
Now that Luffy really took a good look at this person and his friends. His eyes flashed in recognition. Wasn't this the group that his father told him about? No wonder he find this guy familiar. A straw hat, a red vest, a pair of blue pants and a pair of sandals? He also noticed the woman with short orange hair. She wasn't Nami. Luffy was sure of that because Nami was taller, and the tattoo was all wrong. He saw a man with blue hair, wearing a red shirt with some flower design on it. Luffy was also sure that he wasn't Frankie. His shipwright was a man who only wore Speedo. He didn't like wearing pants. So he wasn't Frankie. Plus, this guy didn't have the star tattoos on his arms like Frankie did. Luffy wasn't sure about the last one, though. He looked like Sogeking. But Sogeking wasn't even a part of his crew. Now that Luffy was aware of these guys' identities, he should leave now. But seeing that many eyes on him, Luffy glared fiercely at the fake him since it was all because of him that people were staring at him. Affected by the sudden glare, fake Luffy was startled and unconsciously stepped back due to fear. Sorry, but I'm in a hurry, Luffy stoically said before continued to walk away. He couldn't afford to waste any more time. The others were waiting for him. With Straw Hat Luffy being brushed off just like that, people started to get even more nervous upon seeing the darkened face of fake Luffy. Aiming the gun at the back of the rascal that dared to act so rudely at him, fake Luffy sneered okay, that's all I need to hear. And he fired. For those watching, they all expected to see the poor guy to get shot and die for enraging the tyrant. But instead of having the same fate as the couple that were shot by the fake Luffy earlier, they watched as Luffy coolly dodged the bullet. Luffy, sensing the bullet behind him, merely moved his body a little bit to dodge the bullet. Not like the bullet could hurt him since blunt attack wouldn't work on him, but it didn't fail to make him angry. Glaring at those people that wasted his time, he released Haushikuhaki, causing them to lose their consciousness and fall to the ground, much to the disbelief of everyone who witnessed the accident. Ignoring everyone's speechless look, Luffy quickly walked away like nothing happened. Hancock was right. I should put it on was what the nearby people heard him saying before he completely disappeared from their view. Meanwhile, while Luffy was still busy trying to stay Loki, some of his crew members had already met each other. Usopp and Nami in Grove 35 Riding the floating bubble bike leisurely was Usopp and Nami who just finished buying supplies for the crew's upcoming journey. Do you think the others have already gathered at the ship? Usopp wondered. HM? I'm not sure. Nami responded. I heard that Robin has already arrived. Robin? What about Luffy? Nami sighed. It seems like he's not here yet, or else we would have noticed by now. Knowing their captain's nature as a trouble magnet, if there was a huge ruckus anywhere, the possibility that their captain become the reason for said ruckus was quite high. Hearing what Nami said, Usopp sighed. He's the captain, but he's also the last one to arrive. I kinda expected Zoro to be the last one you know. Nami laughed, agreeing with his words. Suddenly Usopp saw something heading towards them. He squinted his eyes and saw a reindeer with huge horns wearing a blue backpack and clothes running in their direction. Nami, is that who I think he is? Looking at where Usopp pointed at, Nami gasped in pleasant surprise. It's Chopper, right? Then she waved her hand, hey. Over here. Usopp, too, waved his hand upon confirming that the reindeer was indeed their beloved crew's doctor. It's really Chopper. Chopper, who had been running away in tears due to the disappointment of his friend's behavior, suddenly broke into a smile when he saw Usopp. Usopp. He greeted him with enthusiasm. The duo then got off their vehicle. Well, look at you. You have grown. The sniper commented upon seeing how big the reindeer compared to two years ago. I bet you're comfier to ride now. How have you been, Chopper? He's right. Nami agreed as she hugged Chopper you're much more softer and fluffier now. While the duo were happy to see him, Per Chopper was confused when the Nami in front of him was quite different than the Nami that he met earlier. Huh? Nami? Well, yeah? Nami nodded. Suddenly Chopper was frantic with worry. Oh no. I'm happy to see both of you again. But this isn't the time for that. Robin is in trouble. 
Looking at the anxious-looking chopper, both Nami and Usopp exchanged a knowing look with each other before shaking their heads helplessly. Without the need to ask, they had the rough idea of what had happened to their innocent doctor. Frankie and Robin in Grove 17 So this is coating, huh? Robin poked the mass that had been coated by the bubble. It feels like jelly. Yeah. Rayleigh sure knows his stuff really well. Looking pleased with the state of the ship, he continued now we can go blazing across the ocean floor. This is truly awesome. With the mention of the Dark King, Robin remarked I went to see Rayleigh and Shaki before coming here. So you went to the bar? Frankie asked as he made his way to the lawn chair. What number are you? Eight. She answered. Luffy is the only one who has yet to come. Frankie, excited to hear that, exclaimed loudly. So the time for our new voyage to start is almost here. Super. By the way, maintenance is 100% okay. I added some new weapons too. He drank his cola, then as if he remembered something, he added Usopp and Sanji came here once. Usopp took care of the fuels, and Sanji did the foodstuffs. All in all, we are all super ready to go. Soro and Sanji. Grove 41. I want to go to the sea. Soro stated. I want to do some fishing. Seeing the serious look on the stupid swordsman's face, Sanji exploded with a tick mark on his forehead like hell I'll let you, you shitty swordsman. Why not? Zoro argued back. Why do I have to listen to what you say anyway? Do you think I'm walking with you because I want to? Ha! Huh. I just don't trust you enough to leave you wandering alone around this damn island, you brainless Marimo. The amount of time Zoro was lost ever since Sanji found him was enough to make Sanji consider to tie a leash around the swordsman. Sure, some of it could be blamed on him since most of the time it was Sanji who was easily distracted by the sight of a beautiful woman, but who could blame him? He was in hell for the past two years, damn it. Everyone is gonna get together soon, so just shut up and follow me to the ship. TCH. Zoro clicked his tongue in annoyance and looked away with arrogance in his eye. How could the seven talking so high and mighty to the first? Hearing what Soro said, Sanji exploded in anger yet again. Why are you ranking us in the order of our arrival? Don't get so carried away just because you managed to get here first by some twisted miracle. Soro scoffed sure, seventh. Next thing the nearby people knew, there were two lunatics engaged in a battle. Back to Luffy. Touching the fake mustache placed perfectly on his face. Luffy heaved out a sigh of relief. Ever since he put on the fake mustache, he didn't encounter any more trouble after that one guy who was trying to pick a fight with him. He should have listened to Hancock's advice earlier. Watching Rayleigh's Viva card that was leading him to a certain direction, Luffy blinked when he noticed two familiar men sprinted towards him. One with green hair and three swords strapped to his waist, another one was a man with blonde hair and smoking a cigarette. Zoro and Sanji but wait, what if they were not actually his first mate and cook but the fake ones? They actually looked kind of the same as when he remembered them. But just to make sure. Luffy cheerfully greeted them once they reached him. Zoro. Sanji. Long time no see. Zoro and Sanji blinked and stared at this kid that fit the description that their boss had told them before. The cloaked kid with big bag. Sweating, Zoro nervously greeted him back why yeah. It's been a while. Then both of them turned their back away from the grinning Luffy and started to discuss with each other quietly. Boy, do you think he's mistaking us for someone else? Or whatever the case. Don't you think this is our chance? He's the one boss wanted us to find. Sanji whispered back. Then they both looked at Luffy who thought that they were very friendly with each other. Surprisingly, they didn't try to kill each other. Why don't you follow us first? Blinking. Why? Air to catch up with. Each other? Sanji. Look. A lady. Luffy suddenly shouted. Sanji looked behind and saw a woman. Indeed a beautiful woman, but she was too tall. So he answered mindlessly air not my type. Luffy's eyes flashed. Not Sanji. His cook would have gone over there and flirt with the woman in an instant. As for his swordsman. Hey Zoro, I saw two people fighting with their swords over there. 
Why don't you join them? Zoro started to sweat nervously. He wasn't even a real swordsman to begin with. He couldn't fight. These swords were just fake swords. So he answered with a shaky voice I don't feel so good at the moment. I'll join later. Ah ha 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 ha. He stopped laughing when the kid stared at him without much expression on his face. Somehow, his stare made him really nervous. Shall we go now? Luffy took a good look at them both, before nodding to himself. They were not his Zoro and Sanji after all. I'm in a hurry to go somewhere. He walked away, not passing them a glance at all. Fake Sanji tried to stop him by grabbing his shoulder only to be met with a spine-chilling stare. He was so afraid he immediately released his hold on the kid's shoulder. Why you? No longer interested in staying here any longer, Luffy walked away, following the Viva card. Once he was out of their sight, Fake Zoro asked Fake Sanji, What should we do now? Boss want us to take the kid to him. Fake Sanji gulped. Let's just say that, he already left the island. Later, back to where the Sunny was docked. After Usopp and Nami explained to the innocent chopper of what really happened, the trio made their way to Grove 17, where the crew was supposed to meet up. There, they saw both Robin and Frankie with shocking transformation. Especially Frankie. While Usopp and Chopper were being all crazy and excited over Frankie's robotic self, Rayleigh and Shaki suddenly appeared with some news. The Marines? Nami frowned. Shaki nodded. Yes. They think that the fake monkey Chan is the real one. So they've started to make a movement. I've been listening on their conversation, so there's no doubt about that. Thinking of those imposters, Nami scowled in displeasure. Should have struck them harder before. I've informed Brookshan of the situation through the Den Den Mushi at the concert hall. Shaki added. He should be coming here soon. Oh? So he's abandoning his life as a star here, huh? The skeleton sure has guts. Frankie remarked sharply, but anyone could sense the obvious relief in his voice. Isn't that great? Chopper, who had been hanging on the cyborg's huge shoulder, beamed in happiness. Super great. Nami-chan, you're the navigator, right? I will teach you how to control a coded ship, so be sure to remember. Rayleigh spoke. In his hand was a piece of paper with a written instruction on it. All right. I'll do my best. Nami exclaimed. But Rayleigh! Usopp called out. Luffy isn't even here yet. Seeing the worried look on the young sniper's face, the Dark King merely gave him a smile of comfort. Don't worry. Luffy has already arrived on the island. Rayleigh's news immediately brought a wide smile to the five of them. How exciting, Robin stated as the others rejoiced. I gave a den den mushy to Sanji bro when he stopped by here at the ship. He's with Zoro now, Frankie informed them. That's good. At least Zoro wouldn't get lost on his way here. Usopp sighed in relief. It would be troublesome if Zoro was nowhere to be seen once they were about to leave. Shaki then informed them that Luffy was the only one who hadn't made any contact with them yet. After that, she gave them a Viva card that would bring Luffy to them. Grove 42 is a safe bet for you to move your ship there. It's right on the outer edge of the archipelago. Get the whole crew together. It might get a little bit rough, but the time has come. After two years. It's finally time to set sail. Yohohohoho. Thank you for this. Your timing is exquisite. Brooke, who had just finished his last concert, laughed joyfully once he escaped from a group of marines that tried to capture him. Now that his identity as the pirate humming Brooke was known to the world, he considered his career as the world star singer to be over. We're here on Shaki San's orders, the member of the Flying Fish Rider said. Your crew is waiting in Grove 42. Hearing that, Brooke was delighted. My chest is about to explode from excitement. But I don't have a chest for it to explode. Yohohohoho. Grove 41, Zoro and Sanji's current whereabouts. Holding the Den Den Mushi, Sanji nodded. Gotcha. Grove 42's beach, right? That's right. See you there. The snail said in Frankie's voice. Kachak. The call ended soon after that. What's up? Zoro asked beside him. 
Annoyed, Sanji glared at him. Weren't you listening? Before he could burst into another fit of anger, Sanji took a deep breath before staring hopelessly at the stupid brute. Let's see here. Marines. Coming, he started slowly, pointing a finger to himself and then to Zoro. We. Boat. Escape. Do you understand? Irritated, a tick appeared on Zoro's forehead as he fumed why the hell are you talking to me like I'm a kid? Explain it to me in full sentences, damn it. Sanji rolled his eyes. I figured that's the best to explain things to a brainless brute like you. Right. You're getting sliced later. What's with the ruckus over there anywhere? Good question. Over there. Noisy. Sanji continued talking in a slow manner. Later they both headed to where all of the commotion was happening. Also at the same time, in Grove 46. While trying to keep a low profile as he followed the Viva card, somehow Luffy ended up in the middle of a battle. He swore he didn't mean to get pulled into this chaos. Honest. The thing was, he just stumbled upon a gathering of so many pirates who were cheering his name as loud as they could. Curious, he came to see what was going on. Only for him to see the people that were pretending to be his crew stood on top of the plaza, giving some kind of a speech. Because these people kept yelling Boss Luffy, Luffy himself was confused whether they were referring to him or that fat bastard over there. Losing his interest in an instant, Luffy was about to leave for good this time, when a bunch of marines suddenly appeared and encircled the pirates with no place to escape. Sadly, he was one of them. When one of the marines shouted for straw hat Luffy to surrender, he almost exposed himself by almost responding to the marine. Also, he remembered what his father said about letting the fake crew to be a dive. Division? Diversion? Yes, a diversion. Thus, Luffy barely moved from his place other than dodging an incoming attack swiftly. A battle broke out between the pirates and the marines. He stayed being an observer who waited upon his chance to escape without being noticed. He took his promise with Hancock very seriously. Amidst the chaos, a bunch of Kumagai appeared firing a continuous laser beam to their targets. It's the pacifista. What are those human weapons doing in a place like this? Seeing the infamous human weapons, fake Luffy and the rest of the fake straw hats started to see reality, as they trembled in fear. All of them were scared shitless as they watched one of the pirate with high bounty was finished with only a single laser beam from one of the pacifistas. With no chance of winning, they started to flee in fear of getting caught, not the least bit caring about the helpless pirate they tricked that were crying out for their boss Luffy to help them. Hearing that, fake Luffy cursed. Don't joke around. He'll die if he faced them. But unfortunately for him and his group, before they could successfully escape, Sentamara appeared before them with his giant axe over his shoulder. The sight of their big boss Luffy face the big marine caused a wild uproar among the pirates, thinking that their boss would fight for them. Boss. Big boss Luffy. Beat them up. Why are these people calling you Straw Hat? Sentamara narrowed his eyes in disgust and puzzlement. Stared by a marine with a high ranking and those human weapons ready to blast him, made the fake Luffy scared out of his mind. He was ready to just run the hell away, but under the expectation of everyone and also his pride of not wanting to lose face, fake Luffy gulped down his fear and started to talk shit to Sentamaru, even though it was clear to see that he was on the verge of passing out due to fear. H.A. Hey, punk. Don't you know who I am? If you don't want to be K-killed, if you don't want your guts to be splayed all over the floor, then move aside. I'm the son of Dragon. Grandson of Garp. Brother of the Yuzukage. W with a bounty of 400 milli dash. Straw hat isn't some piece of shit like you. Sentamara who had enough of the fake's bullshit immediately knocked him out for good. With only one hit. Everyone was surprised with their jaws dropped at the sight of their boss beaten easily on the ground. They weren't deaf. They also heard what the marine had said before. I see. So all of these guys were tricked by a fake straw hat and joined his crew, Sentamaru stated as his eyes glanced over their shocked faces. PX5, who is this? The pirate, three-tongued Demolo Black. Twenty-six million bounty. PX5 stated and Sentamaru scoffed. Seeing that their secret had been revealed, 
the rest of the impostors started to flee once they saw the enraged look of those that had been cheated by them. Run! They're gonna kill us! Luffy who had been silent the entire time took the chance of everyone's eyes on fake Luffy and the big marine to leave. Just as when he was about to leave, he heard the guy with the axe that it looks like the real straw hat Luffy is also here. PX5 picked up his presence the moment he got on this island. Aim for him, PX5. Luffy didn't expect that he would be exposed even with a disguise. Thankfully, he managed to dodge the incoming laser beam with his quick reflex. But by doing so, his identity had been exposed to everyone here. The cloak and the fake mustache had been removed due to his movement. He quickly grabbed the bag in the air, thinking of those packed lunches that Hancock had prepared for him earlier. Angry, he yelled, what are you doing? My special lunchboxes are in this bag. Those that had been tricked by the fake Luffy widened their eyes even more when they finally took a good look at the resemblance the person in front of them had with the one in the wanted poster. He looks just like in the wanted poster. Sentamara couldn't help but to shake his head at the sheer stupidity of these pirates. Not just the pirates, even some of the marines. How could the real and the fake look the same? So you're gonna get in my way again, huh? I was told not to cause any scene or it'd be harder to set sail you know. Luffy yelled angrily at Sentamaru. Relax. You won't need to set sail. Unlike two years ago, as an official marine. I'm going to capture you now. PX-5, get him. Following Sentamaru's order, PX-5 fired a few laser beam towards Luffy who easily dodged them. Too slow. He said before he went into his gear second. Not wasting any time, he jumped into the air and landed a strong punch to PX-5. The impact from his punch caused a big crack underneath the defeated pacifista. With only one blow, the human weapon was defeated just like that. As expected from someone with a 400 million bounty on his head. Jumping away from PX-5 before it exploded, Luffy grabbed his backpack and ran away, letting out a shishishishishi while he was at it. Well, see ya. I got a feeling that this won't be the last time we saw each other. He grinned at Sentamaru. And just then, when he looked in front, he saw two familiar people heading towards him. His smile widened, this time he was sure that they were the real deal. Hey, Luffy. I knew it was you. Sanji waved at him. Zoro grinned beside him. Both were obviously happy to see their captain. Roranoa Zoro. Black-legged Sanji. I knew they were alive. PX-7 Sentamara ordered another pacifista to attack the duo. But unlike two years ago, things wouldn't stay the same. Move it! Zoro, with his three swords. I cut him. Sanji, with his powerful kick. I broke his neck. The moment PX-7 appeared before Zoro and Sanji, they both easily dealt with it with only a single attack from each of them. Just like that, another pacifista had been defeated. Now everyone 100% believed that they were the real deal. A Luffy, you're number nine. Zoro told him with a clear smugness in his eye. Shut up, you shithead. How long are you going to brag about this? Sanji yelled at the smug-looking Zoro, before telling Luffy to hurry up as everyone else had been waiting for them to set sail. Luffy, who was more than glad and happy to see the two acting like this, grinned. It's really been a long time. I wonder how everyone is doing? Suddenly, he stopped on his track looking at the person who had been observing them at a distance. Zoro and Sanji who noticed that Luffy hadn't moved from his spot asked what was wrong. Instead of answering them, Luffy took a deep breath and yelled out a name as loud as he could. Rayleigh. Luffy's loud voice caused those within the area to also notice the presence of the legendary Dark King. Said Dark King chuckled. I just thought I'd check on you. But it looks like you don't need any help and it seems like you have honed your strength even further. Now go to your friends. Yeah. Luffy nodded. Rayleigh, thank you for everything for these past two years. Then he took a couple of steps forward, opening his arms wide, confusing those around him. Including Rayleigh himself. I'm gonna be the Pirate King, he declared. Zoro and Sanji grinned. The rest gawked at the blunt declaration. Rayleigh stared at the young man and the straw hat on his head. 
For a moment, he thought that he could see the shadow of his old friend standing behind him. Or maybe it's just a trick of light. But he smiled nonetheless, proud of his student. Feeling a pressure at the corner of his eyes, Rayleigh blinked his eyes and the tears disappeared. The trio, hearing a loud thump of footsteps heading on their way, they thanked Rayleigh before continued to run away. Feeling overwhelmed with emotions, Rayleigh let the memories of training the young pirate captain flash before his eyes. Yes. Rise to the top. His booming voice rang across the clearing as he stared at the back of young man. The marines who were chasing after the trio were blocked by the sudden appearance of the Dark King, Rayleigh who obviously didn't want anyone to block his student's path. On their way to leave the place, Sanji took the opportunity to take back those bags inside the bubbles that he left earlier. What's that? Luffy asked. They're all filled with food. Sanji said, causing Luffy to drool. Well, they're one step ahead of us. Zoro, who was in the lead, saw more marines blocking their way. They were ready to attack when suddenly the marines dropped down on their knees and lowered their heads as they mumbled some depressing things under their breaths. Zoro, who was familiar with the effect that these marines suffered, already knew what happened. Horror, 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 horror. I knew that this mayhem has something to do with you people. Luffy blinked. Who is she again? Sanji, who recognized the voice, beamed in happiness. You're the girl from Thriller Bark. Zoro scowled. Well, what are you doing still hanging around here? Is that the way you talk to someone who brought you all the way here? Perona scowled back. If it weren't for me, you wouldn't even be able to step foot on this island, moron. You must learn your place. No words to refute her. Zoro just clicked his tongue in annoyance and looked away. As for Sanji who was triggered by seeing a woman in front of him, he very much acted like a dog as he sniffled Perona just to make sure that she was a real woman. He paid his price when the disgusted and annoyed ghost princess used her negative hollow against him, causing him to be all depressed on the ground. I am a scum, Sanji muttered pathetically. Not sparing him another glance, Perona looked at Straw Hat and the moron. Anyway, hurry up and get going already. Bunch of battleship had appeared next to the island. Eh? Then we should get going now. Suddenly they heard a familiar childish voice somewhere above them. Luffy. Sanji. Zoro. They, including the already recovered Sanji, looked up and immediately grinned. Meanwhile, back to the thousand sunny. Six of them had already gathered together including Brooke who just arrived with his dramatic entrance just a few minutes ago. Chopper had left a while ago, with the help of his friendly big bird, to get the remaining members. They were just waiting for Chopper to bring them here before they could set sail for good. Nami who could see the approaching battleships at a distance started to grow more anxious. Where are they? Chopper is getting them. I'm sure they will be here any time soon. Robin gave her a smile. As if on cue, they heard a cry of a bird and turned around to see the remaining members arrived as they rode on the back of a big bird. Guys, Luffy called out. I brought them. Chopper who was hanging on to the grinning Zoro's shoulder, proudly said. Luffy-san, I missed you so much, Brooke cried out. Frankie lifted up his sunglasses to take a better look. You guys sure look super great. While Sanji was having a sudden nosebleed accident after seeing Nami and Robin, Luffy was awestruck at the sight of Frankie. Whoa, at Frankie? Something wrong, Mecca? Frankie responded in a robotic voice, causing Luffy to be more excited he could explode. Wait, Luffy. I understand how you feel, but can you just save the offer later? Nami tried to reason with him. Can't you see those battleships are coming closer? While Nami was trying to calm down the overly excited Luffy over Frankie's robotic axe, Usopp was holding on to the still bleeding but happy Sanji, tried to get Chopper's attention. Chopper! You need to stop this bleeding. Chopper was busy thanking the bird for helping him, therefore he didn't really listen to what Usopp said. Also, calmly sipping his tea was Brooke with the chuckling Robin beside him who was amused with everyone's antic. As for Zoro, he was so ready for some actions as he looked at those battleships. All of a sudden, cannonballs were heading towards them, almost hitting the ship. Usopp took out a telescope from his bag there close enough to fire at us. This is not good. 
Out of their expectation, the straw hats watched as the incoming cannonballs were soon blocked by a ship that stopped in front of the marine ships. Not sure what was going on, Robin recognized the ship of the Kuja pirates. Kuja pirates? Nami asked. Robin nodded. Led by the Sichibukai Boa Hancock, it is an all-female pirate crew. As Sanji, Brooke, and Usopp were captivated by her beauty, Luffy walked over to them and casually said, Oh, that's Hancock and the others. Following his words, they saw the pirate empress suddenly sent a wink to their direction, or rather, Luffy's direction. She was helping us. All right, it's time to set sail now. Nami, who thought that Luffy was kind of familiar with Boa Hancock, asked if he knew her. Yeah, I was sent to the Maiden Island and became friends with them. He said, much to Usopp's amazement and Sanji's great jealousy. Luffy only laughed when the cook started to cry and accused him of not training hard enough. After all of the fuss, the crew was ready to set sail after the jelly coating thingy had expanded into a giant bubble that covered the entire Thousand Sunny. Despite feeling weird that no other marines appeared to give them any more troubles, Nami proceeded to explain about how the coating works before ordering the others to raise the sails much to Usopp's confusion. Robin then kindly explained to him and the Kotha clueless members about how it really works. Is it time to go, Nami? Luffy asked as he approached her. Yes. At your command, Captain. Satisfied, he stood in the middle with everyone's attention on him. All right, you guys. He started. I've got a lot of things I want to share with you but in any case. Thank you for going along with my selfish decision for two years. That wasn't the first time, Sanji said. He's right, Usopp agreed. You've always been selfish. Plus, it was actually for a good cause. So we're all fine with that, Luffy. Seeing all of the smiles, grins, and smirks from his crew, Luffy laughed delightfully as Sunny started to submerging into the water. Then at the corner of his eyes, he saw the figure of his father watching him with a small smile on his face. Robin too noticed Dragon and the others that had became her comrades for two years waving at her. They both smiled at them, or in Luffy's case, grinned at his father. All right, spread the sails. At once the sails had been released, and the flag of the straw hat pirates swayed proudly under the sun. Set sail. Sunny went underwater. And the straw hats, reunited after two years cheered as loud as they could as they continued on with a journey that had been delayed. Finally, to the New World. Next stop, Fishman Island. Chapter 18, Fishman Island I. A place existed within one consciousness with nothing but darkness around it. There stood two figures staring at each other with understanding in their eyes. It's been a long time since you last contacted me. How have you been? One of the two figures said in a low soft voice. One of its eyes was closed revealing only one red eye with a yellow pupil around it. H.N. The other one responded. The way it held itself showed that this figure had a very arrogant attitude. It seems that you're doing just fine around here. A soft laugh escaped from the one-eyed figure. I like it here. It's peaceful. Snort. H.N. Too peaceful to the point where you were almost caught? I was careless. It admitted. Their figures were reflected on the mirror-like floor below them. One lowered its head, feeling genuinely sorry. The other could only shake its head. Forget it. Just make sure to stay away for the moment. My human has been very sensitive because of your sudden presence these days. I understand. The one-eyed figure immediately agreed. It hesitated to say something for a moment, before it bravely voiced out its opinion. Shouldn't we let her know? It's been so long. It might as well not say anything because now it was glared and growled at by its companion with a terrifying aura that it hadn't felt for a very long time. It immediately let out a sigh. It seemed that its companion's protectiveness had grown even more in recent years. Wah! So this is what humans call cat? A voice full of wonder cried out in surprise when the small person in front of her showed a tiny creature that appeared in a poof of smoke. Two humans could be seen walking alongside a giant mermaid who was sitting on a big floating bubble. Happy laughter rang throughout the place as they moved towards the palace. There are so many interesting things that I want to see up there. Shirahoshi, the mermaid princess exclaimed as she cupped her hands together 
as she dreamt of the day that she would finally be able to go to the surface. Her new friend chuckled. Once you visit Yuzu, I will bring you around to discover many other interesting things. Shirohoshi's eyes lit up immediately. Can you bring me with you when you leave? Please? Staring at the teary big and round eyes of the giant mermaid, Nera smiled at her apologetically. Sorry, princess, but one day I'll bring you along, Kay? Said princess pouted, but she slowly nodded her head in understanding. After all, since her kingdom and her friend's kingdom were now allied with each other, she could go to the surface any time she wanted. How exciting! Her dream would finally come true. As the two talked to each other happily, the third party, a man with dirty blonde hair who had been silent for a while now, suddenly cocked his eyes to one side. With a glint in his narrowed eyes, he jumped and then blocked an incoming massive club that flew through the air with his leg that had been hardened with hockey, before kicking it back. The other two only watched as the club that was meant for Shirohoshi flew back to where it came from. Trembling, the giant mermaid hid herself behind the small human. Not like it could do anything since the mermaid princess alone was a hundred times bigger than her human companion. As for the human companion, Nero wasn't surprised with what happened a few moments ago. Being here for almost a month, she was already familiar with this circumstance. Placing a hand on top of Shirohoshi's hand to comfort her, she said don't worry princess, it's okay now. Hyde clicked his tongue in annoyance. We should go ahead and deal with that annoying pest soon. This is getting annoying. If you can hold your breath underwater for as long as you want, you can go ahead and find him yourself. Hyde groaned at what she said. If he was a good swimmer and could hold his breath underwater, he would have gone ahead and found that bastard himself. Being on the depth of the ocean, as a human who needed air to breathe, they couldn't just recklessly venture outside of the safety of the fishman island just to find a sneaky fishman who knew the ocean like the back of his hand. Even if said fishman was also a devil fruit user who was weak against the seawater, they still couldn't underestimate him either. Hearing what her two friends said, Shirahoshi felt sad. I am sorry. This is all because of me. Don't worry. Hyde was just annoyed because he couldn't go and beat that bastard for you. TCH. Once I find him, I'll break his body into half. Hyde said coldly. Shirahoshi could feel the cold chilling aura coming from the man when he said that, but it didn't scare her. She was already used to her new friend's behavior for being warm but sometimes cold for these past few weeks. Instead, she was touched because they were doing this for the sake of keeping her safe. Once they reached the Ryugu Palace, the Neptune army greeted them respectfully, before one of them brought the three of them to the throne room where King Neptune was waiting for them. At the throne room, King Neptune sat on his seat with his sons and ministers by his sides. Entering the throne room, Shirohoshi cheerfully greeted her father and brothers respectively. Naradano, I hope you're having a good time here, Juman. King Neptune warmly said to her. Yeah, this place is so beautiful it makes me feel kinda reluctant to leave. Nera stated sincerely. Then why don't you stay here longer? Shirohoshi asked with a hopeful look. Nera-san also has a lot of work to do in her own kingdom, Shirohoshi. You can't be selfish to want her to stay here longer. Fukuboshi, the eldest prince, scolded her with a helpless look. Though he was scolding her, he didn't look as stern as he usually was. After all, Shirohoshi was the only sister that he had. No matter what, he couldn't really scold her. I hope the three of you are fine. I've been notified that you were attacked again, Juman he looked at them, especially his daughter, anxiously. Even though he knew that both Neru and Hyde were more than capable of protecting his daughter, he couldn't help but to be worried for her. She was his precious pearl after all. We're fine. Nera assured him. But it seems that the Deccan fellow has been getting more restless these days. His attacks have become more frequent than before. King Neptune knitted his eyebrow in worry. Since the arrival of his esteemed guests here, Shirohoshi no longer had to stay in her room for protection. It was all thanks to the ruler of Yuzu who had put up a special kind of barrier around Shirohoshi so that it could shield her from that hateful Vander Deccan's random attack. Noticing the obvious worried look on King Neptune's face, Nera said I have received a notice that Deccan has been seen in the Fishman district recently. I'm afraid that he and the new Fishman pirates are perhaps planning something no good. 
It's better if you add more security measures around the island. The new fishman pirates? Fukuboshi frowned. They've been staying out of trouble ever since you came here. What is the reason for them to act up now? Nera looked at him and replied I'm not sure. Oh yeah, I caught some nasty pests lurking around the place last night. Hyde spoke. Pirates that were caught by the new fishman pirates. It seems that those that had been captured by them are now being forced to work for them. At least that's what they confessed to me. King Neptune pondered his words seriously. The so-called new fishman pirates had been getting out of line when they kept on terrorizing the residents in his kingdom. Even going as far as causing harm to those who lend a helping hand to any human who came to visit their island. Many pirate crew, too, had fallen into their merciless traps. Until Nehru and her entourage came, bringing peace to the Ryugu kingdom. The new fishman pirates had oddly remained quiet since the arrival of their guests. At least, until now. Nehru and her group had been in Fishman Island for almost a month now. She was here for the sole purpose of proposing an alliance with the Fishman Island. Knowing that she was a good person that had helped many of his people to escape from the evil clutches of the world nobles, Nehru's reputation was quite good among the people here. When she came, she only brought Hyde along with some fishmen and merefolks, including Olypius and Kinana who were the leader of the fishmen and merefolks living in Yuzu. Their visit was received well and her citizens also returned back to visit some of their loved ones. Through her citizens who were obviously well and happy with their lives in Yuzu as they told the people here about the world above the sea, the people here reacted positively about the alliance between the two kingdoms. King Neptune had no reason to refuse the alliance since it was all for the sake of his citizens and his late wife, Queen Otoheim's wish. Thus, the alliance had been agreed easily and the Fishman Island was now under the protection of Yuzu. As King Neptune and Nera talked, one of the Neptune army suddenly went in bringing news. The Straw Hat Pirates are here. The Thousand Sunny carried the crew underwater, and it was a completely new experience for them. Once the crew was out of trouble, they celebrated their reunion and shared their stories for the past two years. Except for Sanji who kept on saying that he was in hell and his life was miserable. Laughter and happy music filled the ship as they slowly descended further into the bottom of the ocean. Underneath the water surface, it was completely a different world than what they had experienced before. The straw hat's journey as they went deeper and deeper into the ocean depth wasn't that smooth, and there were also multiple occasions where they almost got into some serious trouble that nearly robbed them of their lives. But they survived. Thank goodness for that. They even gained a new friend even though said new friend was also the one who tried to attack them before. Their new friend, Surum the Kraken who had been tamed by Luffy earlier, came to their rescue and from then, the giant mythological octopus had willingly brought them to their destination. Once again, it wasn't a smooth ride. But Lady Luck was on their side as they dropped right next to the Fishman Island that stayed majestically inside of a giant bubble. Luffy and his crew looked with wide eyes at the island within the giant bubble with amazement and fascination. It really is the Fishman Island, Usopp cried out. I can't believe that we are really here. It feels like a dream. Mermaid ladies, your Mr. Knight has come. Sanji, who looked like he was so ready to jump out and swim his way to the island, wiggled happily as he fantasized about meeting the mermaids soon. I thought I was going to die back then. But I've already died. Yeah ho 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 ho. Yeah yeah it's great and all but how are we going to enter that place? Nami asked. Since they were pirates, and knowing the not so friendly relationship between fishman and human, she doubted that they would be received well. Especially once they saw their pirate flag. Thanks for that ride, Surum. Luffy thanked the kraken after he placed the thousand sunny properly on the ocean floor. Somehow, after their fall, the bubble still hadn't burst yet. Seeing that Surum was about to leave, Luffy asked. Eh, where are you going? The Kraken seemed to be saying something as bubbles escaped from his mouth, but none of them could understand what he was trying to say. Luckily there was Chopper who could understand Surum. Chopper nodded his head to Surum in understanding, and explained to the crew Surum said that he is not allowed to go near the island. So he needs to go now. Why is that so? Robin asked curiously. 
Chopper continued to listen to what Suram was saying. He nodded his head again, and said he said that he and the other big-sized sea creatures were ordered by someone not to be here for the time being. Even though they were still clueless as to why some sea creatures were not allowed to be here, they didn't press into the matter. The Straw Hats thanked him for bringing them here before the giant octopus swam away. Look at that. Frankie suddenly spoke. They turned, only to see a merman wearing what looked like a guard uniform swam towards them. Surprisingly, the merman smiled at them and asked in a friendly voice, Are you perhaps the Straw Hats crew? Yep. I'm Luffy, the captain. Luffy quickly admitted, causing Usopp and Nami to scold him for being too rash, as they didn't know what this merman was up to. The merman sighed in relief and gave them an even wider smile. Good. I was told to let the straw hat pirates enter once they have arrived. His words caused them to widen their eyes in disbelief, not believing their ears. Air are you sure? Usopp asked cautiously. The merman nodded his head. Yes. Follow me. He then swam away to the main entrance of the Fishman Island. While the others were bewildered, Luffy merely flashed an excited grin as he looked eagerly at his crew. Shishishishi. What are we waiting for? Follow that guy. Wait, Luffy. We don't even know if this is a trap. Nami protested, Usopp agreeing with her. Luffy brushed her off with a laugh. Mama, it's fine. Now, to the Fishman Island. Oi, Luffy. In the end, the Straw Hats followed the merman and just like that, the pirate crew entered legally through the front entrance. The Thousand Sunny was docked in the eyes of many fishmen and merfolks. Even though some of the Straw Hats were still being skeptical of being allowed to enter this island easily, they couldn't help but to appreciate the beauty of the infamous Fishman Island. Being called an island, it really was an island. Like every island, this place also had the dry land which was a part of a reef and the ocean separated into two parts. They could see that many bubble-based items were used here. Even when they were still in their ship, they could see the bottom of the ocean floor. There were many things underneath them that couldn't be explained with words for they didn't even know what they were. They could see many residents here and other sea creatures like small fishes swimming freely underneath them. Mermaid screamed the excited Sanji who looked like he was about to pass out soon. But luckily he managed to hold himself back, much to Usopp and Chopper's relief. There, sitting on a smooth reef not far from them, was a beautiful mermaid with long flowy hair and a long fishtail waving at them. She waved at me. Mermaid Chan. Frankie quickly held the back of the cook's collar before he could go and flirt with the mermaid. Yuwa, it's a real mermaid. They look... A little bit friendly, don't you think so? Nami commented warily when she saw many of them casted a surprise, but not in a bad way. Kinda look at the crew. The people here were whispering as they pointed at them. Can't blame her for being suspicious. She didn't want the same thing that happened in Whiskey Peak to happen again. Yash. Luffy then jumped off the ship, causing the others to yell at him before following after him. Haste that Luffy, really. When all of them finally got off the ship, at the same time forgetting about a certain someone in a barrel, the crowd that had gathered around them slowly dispersed, but not before giving them a friendly wave. Seriously, why are they being so friendly to us? Nami asked. Maybe because the great Yusup sama's reputation has already spread far and wide until it reached their ears. Yusup bragged shamelessly. Really? That's so cool, Yusup. What another beautiful mermaid chan. Careful, Sanji bro. You wouldn't want to end up having another nosebleed now, do ya? H.N., pathetic love fool. I wonder if they would show me their panties? But they don't even wear pandash. Aonami-san, that hurts. Shishishishishi. Interesting. Robin chuckled seeing the crew being lively. As the others were busy watching and gawking at almost everything, Robin didn't fail to see some flags with the spiral symbol in the middle, being hung at every corner of some places. Without even needing to ask, the former revolutionary was already aware of why the people here treated the crew nicely. Or to be exact, who was the reason for the crew to receive such a friendly welcome? While the crew was making such a loud commotion among themselves, a familiar loud voice suddenly called out to them. Guys. Hi. Oh look. It's Kami. 
Chopper, who noticed her first, waved at her. Happy to see their friend again. The young mermaid waved her hand excitedly at them as she sat on top of the bubble thingy. She looked the same as the last time they saw her. Why, I thought you guys would come a month later. Guess I mixed up the date. Kami rubbed the back of her head and laughed nervously. But it's good that we bump into each other like this here, huh? Kami-chan, you have become even more beautiful than you were before, Sanji said. All he had been doing since they had arrived was drooling and smiling with a stupid look on his face as he wiggled around every time he saw a gorgeous mermaid. Sanji-san is right. Your beautiful self is so great it almost makes me go blind. But I have no eyes anymore. Yo-ho-ho-ho. Ignoring the perverted members of the crew, Kami went to Nami. Nami has also gotten a lot more beautiful. Why thank you Nami then struck a pose to make herself look more attractive, causing Sanji to drool over her. Then she asked by the way Kami, are you going somewhere? Kami nodded. I'm actually on my way to work. Wait, mermaids go to work too? Luffy stared at her dumbly. Not offended by his question, Kami just said yeah. I work at the mermaid cafe with my friends. There are tons of beautiful mermaids there. Sanji cocked his head to her in surprise and Mare Mermaid Sea Cafe. Get a hold of yourself, Sanji. Chopper and Usopp yelled in desperation when they saw the blonde-haired man started to grasp his chest and flaring his nose due to overloaded excitement that only he could feel as he imagined himself being surrounded by beautiful mermaids. Seeing that he was showing the symptom of having yet another nosebleed, they yelled again Sanji is in trouble. No. I have to resist. Sanji held back himself, much to the other's amusement. I have sworn to myself that I will not do such shameful things as violently nose-bleeding myself into unconsciousness here in this paradise. Then he suddenly fell to his knees as he murmured pathetically to himself. After all I've been through, sob sob. Isn't it time for me to have my own happiness? Get over it. Nami suddenly interrupted with a disinterested face. Yes, Nami Chuan, and just like that, he was back on his feet as he swooned over the navigator. That's quick. Shishishishishi Sanji sure is getting funnier. Luffy laughed, then he looked at Kami. Hey, bring us with you too. I can't wait to see what kind of meat you guys are selling. Seeing that nobody disagreed with him, Kami agreed to bring them to her workplace as well as giving them a little tour as they passed through many interesting places. But Usopp, seeing that something was out of place with the whole group, frowned slightly. Then he realized what was missing. Or to be exact, who was missing? Zoro is gone! He exclaimed. Oh great, now Zoro was lost and it hadn't even been ten minutes yet. Meanwhile, another place far away from the Fishman Island was a place and a home for those who didn't live on the island. The Fishman District because it was located far away from the main island that had been blessed by the sunlight that managed to reach the ocean floor, this district had always stayed in the darkness. A massive vessel that looked like it had been there for hundreds of years was the place that sheltered many notorious individuals. Abandoned, the once residents of the Fishman Island all chose to live here. Inside the vessel, also known as Noah, sat one fishman as he was surrounded by his subordinates. Because of the extremely low light here, the only thing that was visible was his eyes. Hatred and ridicule flashed across his eyes as he listened to the news reported to him. Straw Hat Luffy? Cold laugh rang throughout the place. He is finally here. One of the fishmen gulped. W.H. What should we do, boss? H.N. Those humans have been staying there for so long, thinking that they are above us. What usage? What straw hat? They're just nothing compared to us. Hody then stood up, startling the others as they backed away in fear and nervousness. He walked until he was outside of Noah, staring ahead of the place where those that he swore to kill were currently at. I have been letting those disgusting humans do as they pleased for so long now. Now that the one that we are waiting for has finally arrived. The time has come. The new fishman pirates shall rise to the top. Chapter 19 Fishman Island 2. Hearing that Zoro was gone, Luffy only laughed. Shishishishi don't worry. Zoro will be fine. The others looked at each other before shrugging their shoulders. 
In any case, Zoro was capable enough to protect himself if something were to happen to that guy. Well then, let's go. Yash. With Kami on the lead, the Straw Hats stared with fascination with their mouths wide opened as they listened to Kami explaining everything that existed here. Such as, those huge tubes that were said to be some kind of a road, the sea turtles that acted as a transportation, and other bubble-based items that they saw along the way. Frankie lifted his sunglasses to get a better look at those things and said to himself maybe I should learn this bubble craftsmanship to add more features to Sunny. Robin, who was the only one who heard him, smiled at him. That would be interesting. Frankie responded by flashing her his usual pose, causing Chopper who stayed on his shoulder to cheer. Oh yeah, Kami-chan, Sanji called her. I thought that octopus was going to meet us at the Sabaity. Where is he? Knowing that he was referring to Hachi, Kami sighed. I heard that he was hurt about a year ago. He's back to normal now, and currently at the Fishman District to recuperate himself. Where's that? Are you going to bring us there later? Luffy asked, clearly excited about visiting another place. It was a very scary place outside of the island. But since you guys are here, then I guess I could guide you there. She said, but she herself wasn't sure if they could actually go there. After that, Chopper asked about Papag, in which Kami told him that the starship was a very famous fashion designer, and that he lived in a big mansion that he owned in Gioverly Hills, which was a well-known rich district in this underwater kingdom. She further said that he also owned a clothing store. Nami's eyes gleamed in interest with that little piece of information, which Luffy and Usopp interpreted as greediness. As so that starfish is actually quite rich, huh? Usopp's sweat dropped when he saw the familiar gleam in her eyes. He mentally prayed for the safety of Papag's wealth. By the way, I wonder where is Zoro now? At the same time, Zoro knitted his eyebrows at the unfamiliar but very fancy-looking surrounding. He looked to his left, his right, up and down before catching the sight of the very huge door that he sure wasn't there before. Or was it always there? He didn't know. Why did the scene change every time he looked away for just a second? At this moment, Zoro scolded the crew in his heart. How could they just walk away and leave him all alone? He was very sure that the others were lost right now. Not knowing where he was going, the green-haired man leisurely walked along the quiet hallway. He saw some fishmen who were probably the guards walking around the place. While he was walking, trying to find a way out, he caught the scent of something nice. Sniffing the air, Zoro grinned. Aha! Food! When there's food, there's gotta be some sake. Following the smell, he reached another room with another door that could fit a giant. Not thinking, he pushed open the door easily. When the giant door opened with a great force, the people in the dining hall immediately turned their heads to see who was so brazen to rudely open the door and disturb the peacefulness of the royal family and their esteemed guests as they were having a meal. All they saw was a single person with green hair with three swords standing in the doorway. Zoro blinked. They also blinked. Young man, are you lost, Jaman? King Neptune kindly asked the person who just interrupted their feast. Before the person could respond, Nero stood up. Pleasant surprise written all over her face as she smiled at the unexpected newcomer. Zoro. Zoro's eye squinted at the familiar figure sitting next to the huge merman before grinning. Oh, you're also here? Not answering him, Nera looked past him with expectation but saw nothing behind the man. You're alone? What about the rest? He shrugged as he casually walked over to her before taking the empty seat next to her. They're lost. Nera doubted that. If they were lost, then how come this guy managed to get here all by himself? You know this person, Nera? asked Shirohoshi who sat beside her father. Curiosity shone in her eyes as she stared at this human who seemed to be on a friendly term with her friend, casually drinking the wine prepared in front of him. Nero answered yeah, he's a friend of mine and also a part of Luffy's crew. Realization hit them, and they hurriedly gave him a warm welcome. I see. If it's Nerodano's friend, then he shall stay and join us for a meal, Jaman. Not being shy, Zoro helped himself by downing drink after drink. Nero could not help but to say I'm impressed that you managed to get here alone. Zoro almost choked on his drink. 
He didn't want to admit that he probably got here by sheer luck. Especially when he himself was aware that he was lost before ended up here. Hence, he just grunted. The princes are going to get you guys actually. The three princes are the ones to bring Luffy and the rest of the crew here. Oh really? He looked at her. By the way, what are you here for? Shirahoshi, who paid close attention to the two, answered Narachan is here to unite our kingdoms together. One day our people will be able to go to the surface, and Narachan will help us with that. Zoro was impressed. I see that you're onto something big. Neri just smirked at him. She didn't bother to say more about the alliance. Later, once they released the news, everyone would know eventually. Now, if only Luffy would come here faster. She really missed her baby brother. Back to Luffy's group. Kami a soft and melodious voice called out to the green-haired mermaid who immediately revealed a huge smile upon hearing the familiar voice. Girls. When Sanji heard the pleasing voice, his heart was tickled and he immediately turned around so fast he almost broke his neck. What greeted his sight made him felt like he was already dead and was sent straight away to his paradise as he cried his eyes out when his eyes were blessed with the beautiful scene in front of him. Finally, Mermaid Cove. Are these the pirate friends that you told us before, Kami? Asked a mermaid who was lying on her stomach. She had a coy smile on her beautiful freckled face as she stared at the overly excited Senji who seemed like he was about to pass out any time soon. I see, so they are the rumored pirate crew that caused such a merryful commotion at the front entrance earlier? They don't look scary at all. Another mermaid with long blue hair chimed in. While Kami introduced the straw hats to the mermaid, Sanji was busy crying with tears and snots all over his face. He's crying more than when he left Baratai. Luffy stated while Usopp wasn't sure if the guy was really okay or not. One of the mermaids swam closer to the edge where Sanji was and grabbed his hand. What are those tears for? Come, let's swim together. This action only made Sanji cry even more as he whimpered to himself, Am I really deserving such joy in my life? He had been living in hell for the past two years. Was he really not dead and actually seeing these beautiful sea goddesses right in front of him? While the others were wondering what actually happened to him for the past two years for him to react like this, Robin only chuckled in amusement. She was more amused seeing him like that actually. You seem to know something? Frankie commented. But the only response that he received were those eye smiles. Nami rolled her eyes, saying let him be, he'll get back on his feet in no time. And true to her words, Sanji did get back on his feet not long after that. As Sanji was having fun with the mermaids, the rest only sat nearby enjoying some snacks. It must be nice to be able to swim like you guys, Luffy said, feeling a little envious with Chopper and Brooke. Since they couldn't swim, they could only observe as their friend was having fun swimming and diving, enjoying the best part of his life. Well, at least he seems to be better now, Usopp commented. He didn't get a nosebleed anymore. Chopper nodded. I'm glad, because I'm completely out of blood stock for his type. I'm afraid I won't be able to cover any more nosebleeds. Sanji has a rare type of blood after all. Luffy, who seemed like he remembered something, looked at Kami. There's someone I want to see here. I wonder if you know where he is. The others listened well to their captain's words. Was there someone that he knew other than Kami and Papag here? Who? The mermaid princess? Kami guessed. It wasn't wrong for her to think that way since most people who came here had the intention to see the princess. Luffy shook his head and answered Jean Bay. Boss Jean Bay? She widened her eyes slightly, clearly not expecting that, or the fact that he knew Boss Jean Bay at all. Yeah. Two years ago, he helped me a lot, Luffy said. The other straw hats knew about Luffy's case but this was the first time they heard it from his own mouth. Since they had started their journey, none mentioned about what happened two years ago. They just let bygones be bygones since things went well for him, but that didn't mean that they were not a little bit curious at all. Wait, Luffy. Jinbei as in, the former Sichibukai? Nami questioned, her eyes narrowed slightly. Shishishishi, yeah. He's my friend. 
he admitted, causing Usopp to loudly wonder what was wrong with his captain for having such an outrageous connection with big-name people. Luffy explained to his crew that he already promised to see the fish man once they were here. Hearing that, Kami's eyes lit up as she remembered having seen a photo of them together during the battle in Marineford. Since Boss Jean Bay is not a Sichibukai anymore, he is still considered a pirate. And those who are a part of the Fishman pirates like Hatchin and Boss Jean Bay are not allowed to stay here. But unlike Hatchin who is staying in the Fishman district, Boss Jean Bay has a special exemption because of someone, so he could stay here. But he chose to stay at the Sea Forest. Sea Forest? Usopp asked. What kind of place is that? I wondered what this sea forest looks like. Hmm. It's located at the northeast part of this island. I can take you there later. Luffy grinned. Whoa. That's great. Thanks, Kami. No problem. Kami laughed. By the way, Luffy Chin, you sure have a great big sister. It's all thanks to her that Fishman Island is now heading towards a new age. H.M.? You know her? Luffy blinked. The others were interested when the mermaid mentioned Luffy's older sister. They, after all, hadn't seen her in person yet. They heard some stories from other people, but they wanted to hear those stories from the brother himself. Everyone was curious, except for a certain archaeologist who chose to remain quiet. Seeing the puzzlement in his eyes, she asked does Luffy Chin not know? About what? The Alliance. Fishman Island is now allied with Yuzu, Kami stated excitedly. It means that we would soon be able to go above the ocean surface without any worry. How wonderful! Yuzu? I think I've heard that word before him. Luffy held his chin as he wondered where he heard of that familiar name before. Idiot! Nami smacked his head. Your sister's kingdom. After hitting Luffy, she looked back at the mermaid. Is that why there are so many flags with spiral symbols around the island? Oh, she noticed it too, Robin thought. You're right. To let other people know that this island is now under Narasama's protection, we hang the Yuza flag around the island, replacing Big Mom's flag. Kami answered excitedly. Big Mom? Usopp cried out in shock and horror. Wait a minute. Doesn't that mean that the people of Fishman Island just went their back on a Yonko? Aren't you guys afraid that Big Mom would attack this island? It's Big M-O-M. A Yonko. Really? Brooke and Chopper cupped their faces in horror. Scary. So what? Luffy picked his nose. Nachan can deal with Big Mother on her own. It's Big Mom. Usopp corrected him. That's what I said. Nami sighed. Then she looked at Robin. You already knew about this matter, didn't you? I knew it the moment I saw those flags. Robin admitted with a smile on her face. No wonder they accepted us just like that, Nami said. So because of the connection that their captain had with the Yuzu ruler who was also a respectable figure in Fishman Island, they were allowed to enter this place. But Luffy-san, doesn't that mean that your sister is here? Kami answered you're absolutely right. Narasama is at the palace with the royal family. Palace? All right, let's go to the palace. Air Luffy Chin. But I'm just an ordinary mermaid here. She sweat dropped. She couldn't possibly just bring them to the palace just because they wanted to. All of a sudden, someone shouted and pointed to something in the sky. Look! Everyone halted whatever they were doing and watched as a huge vehicle carried by a sea beast, heading towards them. The mermaids broke into a gleeful laugh once they recognized the incoming vehicle as they whispered to each other. Sanji, who was drowning in happiness just a moment ago, looked at them in confusion before asking the beautiful blue-haired mermaid, Mero, what was going on. It's the royal gondola. The princes are here? Princes? Even though they were wondering why the royal princes would even bother to come to this kind of place, the residents were overjoyed and immediately gathered to greet them. Sanji who was abandoned by the mermaids were glaring daggers with jealousy at those three princes who came into view. The one in the middle was a large muscular shark merman with sharp eyes and long wavy blue hair, holding on to a golden trident. The eldest prince, Fukuboshi. The one on the right was a long and thin orfish merman with wide round eyes and long reddish hair. Two swords strapped onto his waist. 
the second prince, Raboshi. The one on the left was a large and kinder round open merman with round eyes and brown hair with red fins on his neck. Unlike the other two who had a serious kind of demeanor with them, this one was smiling and seemed like the friendly type as he made a silly dance. The third prince, Manboshi. Sanji childishly thought that they weren't as handsome as he was when he saw how the mermaids gazed at them with adoration in their eyes. Since the straw hats had already known that they were accepted due to Luffy's big sister, they didn't hide themselves from the royal princess. I'm sorry to disturb you ladies, but I have a question. Fukuboshi spoke in a soft voice, causing the mermaids to go crazy for him. Is there the Straw Hats crew here? If they're here, let us know Miafeso Lati Idu Raboshi said in a sing-song voice. If they're not, oh well me read you. Akamanbwa. Manboshi danced a silly dance. I want to play too. Seeing that those three princes were quite hilarious, Luffy stepped forward, followed by his crew. I am Luffy. And we're the Straw Hats crew. Fukuboshi wandered his eyes to each one of them, before staring at the pile of wanted posters in his hand. He realized that one wasn't there, but as long as the captain was here, the shark merman wasn't that concerned. I am here to invite you and your crew to the palace. Eh? Prince Fukuboshi's words caused the crowd to be in shock, especially the crew. That easy? They just mentioned the palace not too long ago. Luffy grinned at those princes. Shishishishi, they came just in time. Yash! Let's go! Arriving at the Ryugu Palace in no time, the crew once again were amazed at how fancy looking the palace was. Nami's eyes lit up so bright when she saw some parts of the palace were actually made of gold. She's probably thinking of stealing them for herself. Usopp whispered to Luffy, who nodded his head in agreement. Nami, who heard them, immediately glared at them causing them to look away quickly. Who'd have thought that the crew would be able to visit the palace? Only the crew was brought to the palace. Kami chose to stay behind because she still needed to go to work. This way, Fukuboshi and his brothers kindly led the crew to the dining hall. When they arrived there, they saw Zoro who was happily drinking with a gorgeous lady. Said lady wore a high-collar, sleeveless orange-colored dress that reached her mid-thighs with a cut on each side showing a black short underneath. At the hem of her dress, there were three black stripes. There was a zipper that started from her collar until it reached her waist that was covered by a long purple sash. Her long silky hair reached her waist. Her eyes were blue like the color of the calm sea in normal days, and those three thin marks on her face told them exactly who she was. Nay chan Luffy ran up to her and like always, regardless of how old he was, hugged her. For some reason, she had grown a lot taller than the last time he saw her. Even though Luffy too was taller, his head could only reach her shoulder. Patting his head out of habit, Nera laughed. Looks like someone has gotten taller. Not just taller, I'm also a lot stronger now. Shishishishi, just wait. One day, I'll surely be able to beat you. Poking his forehead, she chuckled one day. She then looked at her brother's crew one by one. She nodded her head in greeting to Robin whom she had met a year ago. It's nice to see you guys. Thank you for taking care of my little brother. I know that he could be quite the troublemaker most of the time. She smiled at them sincerely. And no problem. In the presence of this capable woman, Nami became humble instantly. Luffy isn't that much of a problem actually. As if. The amount of time he dragged them into some unwanted troubles was countless she wanted to complain. But in front of this great Wanisama, Nami smiled to give her a good impression of herself. Usopp nodded along with her. Chopper stared at her in amazement and blushed when Nera said that he was cute. Just because you called me cute doesn't make me happy, you bastard. Brooke went spinning over to her before bending his body in a gentlemanly way, his bony hand held onto her soft hand. Miss, I am honored to finally meet you. Can I see Dash? Before he could finish his words, Nami punched him down to the floor. And Nami-san. He whimpered. Don't be rude. She yelled. Frankie greeted her next with his usual pose. Nero instantly liked the cyborg's energy. Lastly, she looked at the man whom she recognized as the one who had trained under Ivankov. 
Recalling his situation, she suddenly started to pity him and gave him a brilliant smile because of it. Being hit with a sudden smile from a gorgeous lady, especially one that he wanted to see for a while now, Sanji covered the bottom part of his face. He could feel the heat of his body starting to rise and his heart was beating furiously. She was even more beautiful than the last time he saw her, he thought. Doesn't she remember me? Usopp and Chopper were kinda worried that he would pass out, but they sighed in relief when the man didn't pass out or had a nosebleed. When Nera looked away from him, Sanji was a little bit disappointed. But seeing that she sat back beside that brute, his eye twitched. With the whole crew finally here, Zoro shamelessly said you guys are late. Usopp and Nami glared at him. You were the one who walked away on your own. TCH. He clicked his tongue, not denying anything. Shishishishi. Luffy laughed. Now you've met my whole crew. What do you think, Nachon? They seem like a nice and fun group of people to be with. She said and Shirahoshi agreed with her. Knowing that she was the princess, the crew automatically looked at Sanji. Surprisingly, he once again didn't show any extreme reaction upon seeing the mermaid princess. Ahahoha. A booming laugh took their attention away, only to see a huge merman with a crown on his head. Neradano is indeed right. They indeed look like nice and fun people to be with, Jaman. Because they were focused on Luffy's sister first, they didn't notice him at first glance, even though he and his family were big enough to be seen from a distance. With a long table that could fit a hundred people, King Neptune sat at one end. The three princes took their respective seats on his right. Fukuboshi first, followed by Raboshi and Manboshi. Shirahoshi stayed on her seat next to her third brother. And on King Neptune's left side, sat Nera with Zoro next to her. A finger pointed at Zoro. Sanji yelled, You! Why are you sitting next to Nera-san? I came here first. Zoro said with a smug. This was like the time when he arrived first in Sabaeity and continued to be smug about that. Sanji gritted his teeth in annoyance. Taking a deep breath, he swayed his way to Neru. Nerusan, it's me. You can call me your handsome knight if you want. Sanji seems to be quite normal now. I guess he has completely recovered now, huh? Usopp said as he watched the cook flirting with the Yuzukich. Maybe because she was nice, she didn't push Sanji away. Chopper was finally at ease. That's good. Come and take a seat, Jaman. With King Neptune's invitation, the crew took their seats. Luffy sat next to Zoro, followed by Nami, Sanji, Usopp, Chopper, Robin, Frankie and lastly Brooke. As the feast went on, Nero observed her brother's crew carefully. She was already familiar with Zoro and Robin so she focused more on the rest. With Luffy telling her once about his crew, she knew that the long-nosed Usopp was a coward and a liar but also a good friend who sometimes could be a brave sniper. The one named Nami was a thief who loved money and was a great navigator. Chopper was once just a normal reindeer before he ate a devil fruit, and he was the crew's doctor. Frankie was a cyborg who built the crew's ship, Thousand Sunny, after he became their comrade. Brooke the crew's musician was a dead man once, and alive once again thanks to a devil fruit. As for the last one, Sanji, he was a man who loved women and also a great cook. When Nera first saw his wanted poster, the one picture that resembled Duval, she didn't think much of him. But now that she looked at him carefully, this guy kinda seemed familiar. But she brushed it off. After all, there were a lot of people who sometimes shared some resemblances with another person. Oh yeah. You guys seem so close to each other. Usopp suddenly said as he observed Zoro and Nero who sat side by side. When they arrived, he noticed that they were talking and laughing together like they had known each other for so long. Don't you know? Nero-chan and Zoro-san have been friends since they were small. Shirahoshi kindly told him what Nero had told her about her friendship with the swordsman. Really? That's cool. Luffy exclaimed. Did you meet Zoro during one of your early adventures, Nechan? He remembered that Nera had always gone away traveling the whole East Blue before she went to the Grand Line. So maybe she met Zoro during that time? If that was the case, Luffy wasn't surprised. Instead of Nera answering, it was Zoro who answered as he laughed. Yes, she was lost on her way before she found my village. 
I still can't believe that you managed to get lost. That's rich, coming from you. Sanji, Nami, and Yusup said at the same time with annoyance written all over their faces. TCH. It was just one time. Neru argued back at the man next to her. Seeing their closeness, Sanji was jealous. How come he was unlucky to be stuck in hell but that stupid Zoro and Luffy managed to get the beauties? First it was Luffy and the Maiden Island, then Zoro with that cute girl Perona. Now he was also friends with the person he wished to see? Damn it. Suddenly, Nehru received a sudden flash of memories from her clone who was with Hyde. She frowned when she analyzed what she saw. King Neptune, who saw her frowning face, asked is there something wrong, Jaman? Because King Neptune himself was big, his voice was also loud even though he tried to speak as low as he could. It naturally caught the attention of others. With many eyes on her, she shook her head. Just a small matter. Then she stood up. I need to go to the sea forest to handle some things. You guys can stay here and continue to eat more. Luffy's eyes brightened when he heard that she was going to where Jean Bay was. He quickly stretched his arms, letting his body fly towards her before wrapping his rubbery arms around her like a snake. Take me with you too, Nei Chan. I want to see Jean Bay. With him speaking like a spoiled kid to her, just like when he was a kid, she didn't refuse him. The others wanted to follow them, but were held back by Nami who told them to let the siblings spend time with each other. The kind Shirohoshi let Megalo, her pet shark, to take them to the sea forest. Riding on top of Megalo's back, the duo was covered safely by the bubble. With his first time riding a shark, Luffy was very excited. I think this is the first time we are going for an adventure, just the two of us. She suddenly said. Usually there will be you, Ace and me before Sable comes into our lives. Luffy laughed and agreed with her. We said that we would be on the same pirate crew. But Ace joined another crew, Sabo joined Dad's army, and you became an empress. Dad? Nehru raised one of her eyebrows, looking at him with a knowing smile. So you two have already met? Luffy nodded before telling her about his meeting with Dragon at Sabaity, and what they spoke of. Listening to her brother, Nehru nodded her head in approval. She approved of what Dragon did. It was never too late to be closer to your own son, even though said son was almost twenty. Didn't she get closer to her father when she was a teen as well? I haven't seen Ace for so long. Where is he, Nechan? He lives with me in Yuzin now, she said, surprising Luffy. Nero continued when she saw the obvious surprise in his eyes. The Whitebeard crew is no more. Marco and the others are all scattered around the world and continue on with their own journey. After the payback war, they stayed in Yuza for a month. And in that one month, they had already decided to disband the crew. Nero wasn't sure of the details, but she could guess. Since then, Ace stayed with her and Marco went to take care of old man Whitebird's resting place and his hometown. As for the others, she wasn't sure either. The payback war was also known to those who paid close attention to the former Yonko's crew. She heard that because of Shanks's intervention who was said to have ended the battle himself, Sakazuki was quite angry with the matter. She knew that the changed location of the HQ was because of the new fleet admiral's own personal grudges, ambitions and obsession to be closer to the enemies of justice. With Ace living with her, it was also an unspoken declaration to the world that Fire Fist Ace had now officially joined her empire. He was still a pirate. But he wasn't just a single pirate with no crew. That brother of hers had decided to take back his position as the captain of his own pirate crew, the Spade Pirates. When he joined Whitebeard, they followed him. And when he became the second division commander, they also joined his division out of loyalty. When the crew disbanded, they chose to follow him and stayed with him in Yuzu. Thus, the rising rookie pirate crew from five years ago was now active again. The Spade Pirates became the only existing pirate crew from Yuzu. Why is he not here then? Luffy pouted. Since Ace lived with Nechan, then why didn't he come here too? Nair grabbed his cheek and pulled it hard, causing him to yelp in pain. He has things to do. But I'm sure that you guys will see each other later. Luffy rubbed his cheek. Man, Nechan only pulled it once, and it hurt so much it made him confused whether it was his big sister or Gramps that did it. 
Luffy shuddered. He hoped that his big sister wouldn't end up becoming like Garp. What about Sabo? He's with the army. Probably doing a mission or something. With only the two of them riding the shark to their destination, the siblings enjoyed the beautiful scenery of the Fishman Island until they arrived at the northeast part of the island. Once they reached the end part of the sea forest, Nehru and Luffy, with their sharp observation, immediately saw a blue fishman standing together beside a tall man with dirty blonde hair. Even though they stood at the ocean floor, there was also a bubble around them. Luffy recognized the fishman instantly. Jean Bay. The duo who heard a loud voice yelling somewhere above, looked up. They watched as the two siblings jumped off from the shark's back and entered their bubble, landing right in front of them. Yo, Bossa Hyde greeted her with a playful salute. Luffy Quinn, how have you been? Jean Bay asked the young man with a joyful laugh before turning to greet the woman next to him. Narasan, it's good that you're here now. Phew, you don't know how nervous I was without you here. Hyde released a sigh of relief as he put his hand on his chest. Luffy looked at him in confusion. Who are you? You don't remember me? Do I even know you? Hyde looked at Nero from Luffy, feeling wrong. Really? Nero rolled her eyes. Luffy, this is Hyde. My friend. He was also there, back at Marineford. Oh. As if he remembered something, Luffy stared at the older man with a surprised look. Oh, you're that guy. The Miss Guy. It's Hyde. Hyde finally introduced himself with a sigh. Anyway, look at that. Can you sense that nasty feeling? Nera stared at the place in front of her with narrowed eyes. Because this was the end of the sea forest, they were very close to the wall of the bubble. Thus, they could clearly see what was there in front of them. At first glance, there was nothing out of the ordinary. It was calm and peaceful as always. Too calm actually. Nera narrowed her eyes even more. When she first arrived here, there were actually many sea creatures, big and small swimming freely around the island. Once, she felt a very familiar presence somewhere out there. It was kinda heavy, like a stone that was pressing hard on her chest. It was the kind of feeling that she had always felt from Karama's evil chakra. But one day, it disappeared, and she never felt it again. But to say that she wasn't curious and disturbed by the feeling that refused to leave her would be a complete lie. After that, big sea creatures never to be seen around here again. There were only the small ones. Now, she couldn't even see a single crab that she often saw hiding among the sand on the ocean floor these days. That was why she felt that it was too calm. And when it was too calm, it just screamed suspicious. Nachan, Luffy put his hand on her shoulder. I can feel that there is something there. Nera looked at her brother. You can feel it too? Hmm. He nodded. I saw a dark shadow there, Nehru, Hyde stated as he frowned. And judging by the size and distance, it was a big one. Perhaps even bigger than Karama. Karama, who stayed in the seal, snorted. At where they stood, they could actually see the places that weren't hit by the sunlight. Those places were naturally clouded with darkness, to the point where it was hard for them to see anything. Nera felt a tingling sensation when she sensed that she was being watched. Her eyes locked on the darkest part of the surrounding, right on her line of sight. She didn't move. She didn't blink her eyes. The other three naturally didn't bother her. They too, focused on their own observations and felt that something was indeed there. The more they stared, the more they could see a vague shape of something long, lurking in the darkness. That's it. Hyde gasped. That's the thing that I saw earlier. A seeking? It might be a seeking. Jean Bay nodded. It's been a while since any seeking wandering around outside. But this particular one scared away the rest of the sea creatures. Luffy frowned. It doesn't give me a good feeling, Nachan. She watched as the unknown creature moved until what she assumed to be its head, facing them. In the darkness, suddenly appeared a pair of sharp glowing green eyes staring at them. Considering the size and the distance, its size was quite horrifying. When Nera made eye contact with the creature, she felt like she was being pulled into a state of trance. The only thing that she could see was that glaring eyes, as if pulling her deeper and deeper into the abyss. 
She couldn't help but to keep staring at those eyes, staying enchanted, trapping her with no way to escape from its bewitching eyes. Luffy, who noticed that there was something wrong with his sister, frowned. He noticed how her eyes were blank and she didn't seem to realize that she was walking slowly towards the mysterious creature. Luffy didn't like it. This wasn't like his big sister at all. Therefore, he grabbed her shoulder before her body could crash into the bubble. Few more steps, and she would be out of the island. Luffy released a small bit of his haushikuhaki, and his sister woke up. What was that? Hyde questioned as he stared at the siblings in bewilderment. He didn't get what just happened. All he knew was that Nero was walking forwards and that baby brother of her suddenly grabbed her shoulder before releasing a small burst of his hockey. He and Jean Bay were startled for good. Nero-san? Nero stared at the glistening wall of the bubble a few inches away from her and frowned. Hypnotizing? That was one sly creature, she thought. How could you let yourself be trapped just like that? TCH. I didn't expect that. Maybe because it realized that it had failed, the creature slowly closed its eyes. But they could sense that it was still there. Waiting. Nera stared at the younger man beside her, and the hand on her shoulder. She gave him a grateful smile as he removed his hand away. Looks like we are about to face a troublesome situation soon. She said. Chapter 20 Fishman Island 3 Still at the sea forest, the four still continued to observe the mysterious creature that chose to rest its body right in front of them. Saying it was in front of them, but honestly, the distance between them and the creature was quite huge. Even at this distance, it looked big enough to accommodate the whole island. Just imagine if the creature was closer to them? That was how big the creature was. Luffy stared at his sister, Jean Bay, and that Miss Guy. Seeing the serious look on them, Luffy unexpectedly stayed quiet and docile like a lamb beside his big sister. It could be said that no matter how oblivious or simple-minded he was called by his crew, he too was able to read the situation. If the three of them looked so serious as they watched the mysterious creature, then it really meant that it was really not good. Other than his observation, he also trusted his sister's judgment. Hence, he just stayed by her side and watched. What about those intruders? Nera asked, looking at Hyde. Already locked up. Other than being crazy strong, they also shared the same trait. Red eyes and aggressiveness. I had to use my power to weaken them before knocking them out. Hyde gave his report. Red eyes? You know, like those who haven't had enough sleep? Yeah, like that. Nera pondered over his words. But she couldn't quite understand the problem since neither she nor her clone were the ones who faced those intruders. Hyde only relayed a message to her through her clone, saying about some intruders and suspicious creatures with the possibility of being a threat to the island. Hence, why she was here. She didn't actually take Hyde's words seriously about the creature before, but after seeing that darn thing dared to hypnotize her, she thought that it wasn't really just a mindless sea beast living underneath the sea after all. Luffy who was getting bored just standing still and looking at that thing, took a look around the sea forest and whistled at the sight. This place looks great. Jibei, feeling proud, laughed at his words. It sure is. By the way, Jinbei, I heard that you're not a Sichibukai anymore. Is that true? Luffy asked bluntly. Instead of feeling offended, Jinbei laughed. It's true. Because of my actions two years ago, they abolished my position, and now I'm a wanted criminal. But thanks to Narasan, I was able to stay here. Eh, then Jinbei. Luffy then jumped in front of the fishman with a wide smile on his face. Why don't you join my crew? Jinbei was stunned, as well as Naru and Hyde. Man. Asking a former Sichibukai to join his crew. Your brother sure is brave. Hyde whispered to Naru who was amused. Luffy wanting Jinbei to join his crew was because he truly considered the fish man as a friend, and also because Jinbei was a good person that helped him to save Ace. Plus, with him on his crew, didn't it mean that his crew would get even stronger? Jinbei looked a little bit troubled. He made eye contact with Nero who then nodded her head at him. I'm afraid one of your crew members won't accept me, Luffy Quinn. Eh? Confused, the slow Luffy was trying to guess who in his crew wouldn't accept Jean Bay. 
but suddenly they tensed as they heard a sharp whistling from out of nowhere. The creature then made a movement. It opened its eyes and swam away from the darkness as it finally revealed itself to them. But it wasn't the only thing that showed itself. Slowly, one, two, three, until more than a one hundred sea beasts smaller than the creature in front of them, showed up surrounding the whole island. Nehru, Jinbei and Hyde narrowed their eyes when they saw many people, humans and fishmen, riding on the back of those sea kings. Luffy blinked in confusion. Wait, what's going on? The three stared at each other with a grim expression. We're under attack, Jinbei said. At the same time, I wonder what Luffy is doing now, Usopp asked with some food still in his mouth. Nami scowled at his behavior. Finish your food first before speaking. Honestly, your table manners have gotten as bad as Luffy. Since when did you eat so much anyway? Sanji spoke. With all of the food gone in an instant, it was Usopp who finished most of them, surprising the others. It was like, the sniper now had become Luffy. Usopp gulped down the food in his mouth, and released a nervous laugh. He couldn't actually say that he once ate so much he grew fatter in just a short time, right? That would be so embarrassing. He promised himself that he would control how much he ate, but seeing these delicious foods he just couldn't help himself. Sigh, now he gotta exercise more in order to keep his current body shape. Eating more is good too, Usopp San Brook sang in the background, accompanied by the cheerful sound of a violin. Or else you will end up all bony like me. Yo ho ho ho. With Brooke and other musicians playing a cheerful song, Frankie and Chopper were busy dancing together. Zoro was busy drinking with Riboshi. Robin was asking around if there was any historical place that she could visit. Nami continued to nag at Usopp for his poor table manners, while Sanji backing her up as he swayed his body side to side, saying Nami Chuan is absolutely beautiful. Yo ho ho ho. Per Usopp San. Oi, do you have any more drinks? Super. Ah ha ha ha, let's continue dancing. Shirahoshi laughed delightfully at the way the straw hats behaved. Even King Neptune and the three princes were amused with their antics. But then. Bad. This is bad. A royal guard suddenly broke into the dining hall with an anxious look on his face. He ran as fast as he could before dropping to his knees and panted as he tried to catch his breath. Seeing the overly anxious royal guard, King Neptune frowned. Fukuboshi asked immediately, Is something wrong? My Majesty, the Fishman Island is under attack. An hour ago. Away from Fishman Island, standing before his army that was a part of the new Fishman pirates, and the many human pirates that he caught before. Hody put on a bloodthirsty grin on his face. Looking at his troop, he was sure it was more than 100,000 people, ready for a bloody battle. Not only that, more than 100 sea beasts had been gathered to assist them in the battle. With his troop and these many ferocious sea beasts, not to mention that one monster that he placed nearby Fishman Island to guard it, Hody was sure of their victory. With many eyes on him, Hody spoke. The time has come for us to take over the Fishman Island. The crowd roared in response. It was common knowledge that humans are our greatest enemies. He stared at those humans that he despised. He smirked when they showed a look of fear. Humans are the reason for the death of many of our people. Just like the death of Fisher Tiger. And now that Fishman Island itself has allied with those despicable humans from the surface. Isn't that more like a slap to our faces? Yeah. Hody's grin widened. Those humans. Yuzukage Neru and Straw Hats Luffy have deceived our King Neptune as he willingly presents our beloved fishman to our enemies. This is betrayal. A complete betrayal from the royal family. It could be said that Hody's words really lit the fire of hatred in their hearts. Especially those in the new fishman pirates. These fishmen had stayed with him for so long, so it wasn't that hard for Hody to play with their emotions. Especially their natural hatred for humans. Feeling that he had said enough, Hody casted a signal to one of his subordinates. Hammond nodded before distributing a single pill to everyone there. These people knew what it was, for they had been eating this pill ever since it had been mass-produced by Hody himself. They were told that it could give them strength. At first they were wary, but now they were more than happy to have one. 
What they all desired now was only that pill. They didn't know it yet, but what they were showing now was what could be called an early stage of addiction. Hody obviously knew what he was doing. It's done, boss, informed Hammond. Light flashed across his eyes. Hody looked coldly at his army before turning his body away from them. He jumped on the back of one of the sea beasts, and the others quickly followed suit. Raising his trident, he shouted to our new era. To our new era, they cried out. Wait for me, Shirahoshi. Dekken, who stayed behind Hody, said to himself. Then with Hody as the leader, they marched forward, heading towards the Fishman Island. Seeing the peaceful island bathed under the sunlight, Hody let out a cold laugh as he scowled in disgust. He looked at one dark corner where his beloved monster was, and whistled. A large and long sea king, bigger than the Fishman Island itself, came out from the shadow and swam lazily around the island, before stopping at the bottom part of the island. It seemed to be staring at something. But because of the distance, Hody failed to see what it was that gained the interest of his beloved pet. His beloved pet, the sea serpent. Its size was almost as big as the island. Hody was the only one who could command this beast. Then, the rest of the sea beasts that looked small compared to the big boss, followed suit and circled around the island. The island was now completely surrounded by Hody's group. Without any words, Hody went to the entrance. The guard, the one that allowed the straw hats to enter the island earlier, panicked once he saw them, but before he could even ring the emergency bell, he was shot to death right in front of the entrance. The poor guard's body fell right onto the ocean floor. Hody led his people inside the island, letting only the horde of ferocious sea beasts outside to continue entrapping the island. Those who saw the intruders yelled out in fear, only to be shot down by Hody one by one. You sure are ruthless. Deccan commented as he smiled as wide as he could, but was ignored by the captain. Attack, Hody ordered mercilessly. And with his order, the new fishman pirates went on a rampage. They blindly attacked the people, especially human visitors. They even destroyed many buildings with explosions here and there. Those from Hody's side would toss a bomb and cause an explosion, shooting and slicing, and even poisoning those around them. The unfortunate people that couldn't escape from Hody's people could only be surrounded and caught before being chained together. They later were dragged to what they recognized to be the plaza, which was already ruined. In just a short time, the once beautiful and peaceful Fishman Island had been turned upside down. Some had died and many were injured, and those who survived could only be dragged and gathered together before Hody, who sat in the middle of the plaza like a king who wanted to behead his subjects. The people of the Fishman Island shivered in fear. Most of them were still in a state of bewilderment of what just happened. How could just a few minutes ago, things were completely fine but now most of them were being captured and now their island was in chaos. Most of the buildings were destroyed, the water was now polluted with blood and filled with the crumbles of their destroyed reef. Because of their situation, children were crying and some of the brave ones shouted at the new fishman pirates. What do you think you're doing? Olypius, who just happened to be one of the captured people, shouted angrily at Hody while protecting the injured Kinana behind him. Hody looked at the fish man that dared to shout at him, and sneered. He recognized the two people immediately. You're a part of the Yuzu Trash, right? Olypius and Kinana glared at him. They were citizens of Yuzu. And to let this guy insult Yuzu was unacceptable. To insult Yuzu meant insulting their Kage. Seeing their angry glares, Hody laughed loudly. His laugh sounded like a mock to the ears of not just the Yuzu citizens but also to the Fishman Island's residents. They watched as Hody used a visual den-den mushy that was connected to a monitor. With this, he would be broadcast to every part of Fishman Island. To those who are watching, Hody started and looked around, before he suddenly shot Olypius and Kinana without any warning, shocking those around him. Olypius! Kinana-san! Those who knew the two immediately went to their side to stop the bleeding. Hody laughed again before looking at the visual Den Den Mushi, as if he was looking straight at his targets. The royal family. Yuzuki Jneru and Straw Hat Luffy. Hear me, if all of you fail to show yourself here, I shall kill everyone. And don't even bother to do something stupid or else. 
At this he turned the den den mushy around to show those massive sea beasts surrounding the island, waiting to burst the bubble that had protected the island for so many years into nothingness with their sharp teeth. This island will cease to exist. Either show up or the sea kings will attack the island and kill everyone. Hody was really determined to destroy the fishman island, they thought. 